Hayes came out and they racked up four runs in their first at bat. Pierce, two run blast, second inning. The Orioles on top after two by a score of six nothing. Game over, not hard. The Rays battle back, storming with their own long balls. And before you know it, it was a one run ball game. Ninth inning. That calls for Britain to come on and wrap it up, and that is exactly what he did. The Orioles win it. Now a chance for a sweep in the first series of the year. Inside here at the drop, St. Petersburg, Florida is the site. The Orioles with a couple of impressive wins in the first two games of the season. For the Orioles, a chance to go 3 0 to start the year. The last time they did that was 2012. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome. It is a chance for a sweep night here. They swept Tampa Bay here in Tampa Bay last year. That came in May. Can they do it again? We are about to find out. Thought you might like to see what the sweeps are all about in Major League Baseball. Let's go back to last season. Here's what it looked like. As far as sweeps are concerned, in two, three, four, and five game series, and we're talking about the three game series, you see 24% were sweeps in three game series during the year. The Orioles came out second best in terms of sweep numbers last season. They had nine sweeps, six of them at home, three on the road. You see the opportunity to have more. They lost four chances at home in a sweep game, three on the road. They were swept at home and on the road, only one each. Orioles did a good job in getting those sweeps. Jim Palmer, a chance for one here tonight. Well, it is, and, you know, I, I, those numbers tell me it's hard to sweep. But I think, uh, you know, you, if you go to Cleveland, you have the lake effect. If you uh, play for Buck Showalter, you have the, the Buck effect, and that is you need to win series. Uh, the Orioles uh, were the third best team behind the Nationals in Kansas City. So you love to win tonight, but you won the first two. You know, winning the first game of any series kind of gives you a chance to maybe win the series. So if you do that, yeah, maybe you're going to win 96 games again. But at the end of the day, it's great to have an opportunity. This You're going to beat the Rays and play the Rays. This is when they don't have their best number one and two pitchers. Take advantage of it. And to get a chance to do it on the road. Orioles, some new members this season we'll be introducing you to. Evan Cabrera is one of them. An opportunity to talk with him how he got into baseball a little late as a teenager. To you by Southwest Airlines. Find your next low fare at Southwest.com. 
and by Coons.com. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Everett Cabrera, one of the new members of the Orioles. The reason uh, scouts were attracted to him initially, speed. For his career, 78% effective in stealing bases. He led the National League in stolen bases 2012 with 44 out of 48. He is from Nicaragua, came over from San Diego, joining the Orioles. What did he know about the Orioles prior to this season? We were talking about the American League East. He's talking about Orioles. It's a lot of, a lot of history, you know, baseball. And, and, and it's, it's the thing, like, they always want to win, you know, and, and you in the American League East, you know, and it's a lot of good thing in this, in this division. From Nicaragua, we were just talking about that a bit. Tell us a bit about your home country as far as baseball is concerned and the part it plays in kids' lives there. It's really tough. It's really tough to to, to play baseball over there. You know, but baseball is kind of expensive. You play in the street. You don't play actually like in, in Lee, you know, like in Little League here. A lot of kids play in Little League over there. You don't play over there. And actually, I was playing soccer. I, I, I never played baseball, kind of lay a little bit. Yeah. What what age were you when you started? Do you remember playing baseball? 14, 15 years old. Wow. Yeah. And how'd you start? How'd you happen to turn to it? My friend told me, like, hey, this scout going to come to to Nicaragua to, to see to see kids, you know. Or they're going to do tryout. And then you fast. I was fast, you know. I was playing defense in soccer, so... I always fast in soccer, you know, soccer player, you, you have to be fast. You have to get those legs ready. And then they put me in 60 yards and pressing a little bit. And then they say, hey, you, you can be in center field, playing center field. All right, I, I, I do it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either baseball, you know. But And then they, they try me in center field, second base, short stop, everywhere. And then I start, like, love this game. Start got the passion for this game. And then getting crazy every yeah. single day practice in the field every day and then get get that get that rhythm in baseball quick was there an academy there or did you work out at one of those academies that uh, are available or not no no, no. academy in those time it's only one academy in those time it was a dennis martinez academy but he doesn't have a chance for for be for being the academy and then so i was practicing with my friends two friends they Give me ground balls, fly balls, and short stop. Uh, running like crazy, like 60 yards, like 10 times a day, yeah. and then running in the beach, stuff like that. Maybe better, and then like you say, uh, start love this game like like crazy. And now I love this game. I got, I got like I feel this game. I live this game. I eat this game. I, I feel this game. You have to be. Uh someone really looked up to by the kids in Nicaragua because as we talk about it's a way out for a lot of them from poverty and tough times isn't it and now they've got you to take a look at and say maybe I can do that yeah it is it is crazy over there you know like a lot of kids when I go there like a lot of people go excited super excited to see me in the big leagues and then I hear my friends now they they back there in Nicaragua and my friends say hey it's crazy when when you debuted in 2009 in my small small country, a small uh, city. That's where I born. Yeah. Uh, they was sliding my like me, industry, in the dirt, sliding like hand first, fit first, sliding like Carrera, things like that. You know, like make make you special inside. You know, like because when you come from the poor countries and made the big leases, it's a lot. Everett, congratulations. Great to have you with us. Have a, have a wonderful season, and we'll uh, talk to you as we go along. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, you know, we always joke about, hey, it's great to be a big leaguer. I mean, here's a kid that really does appreciate it. And he mentioned Dennis Martinez, one of my dear friends. And, of course, the, you know, somebody had a chance to mentor one more games than any Hispanic pitcher in the history. And, you know, he goes back every year to Nicaragua. And, boy, you can make a difference uh, when you come from a country like that. Really interesting yeah. conversation with him. Great. Great young man. We'll talk a little more about what he'd like to do in Nicaragua as we go along. All right, let's take a look at the Southwest starting lineup. Uh, book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Deaza Pierce can't keep him out. Snyder, Jones, Davis, Machado, Flaherty, Lavarnway gets a start to Jonathan Scope. Steve Pierce on fire. Two home runs, three RBIs, two games.
And the Orioles will face Jake uh, Odorizzi, so they get got to see him a couple of times last year. Loves to drop. Uh, six of his 11 wins. He went 11 and 13 last year. A lot of strikeouts. ERA about uh, almost three and a half runs lower here than on the road. He something in the air tonight. No, I don't think Phil Collins is here. We'd love to see have him maybe. We don't I have halftime, but yeah, in the, in the air tonight. Well, he's a fly ball pitcher, and learn from the past. He did pitch against the Orioles in, in late uh, uh, August last year. One of those games uh, you'd like to forget, but you can't. Four innings pitched, 11 hits, uh, eight runs, and four home runs. So make your adjustments. Certainly has the talent to do it. He's got four good pitches, and the Orioles will have their work cut out for him. So Odorizzi is ready to go, and so are the Orioles, and we're underway in game three. Diaz at the plate, and he will take it for a strike. Alejandro Diaz settling into that leadoff spot for the Orioles with a home run here in the first two games, a couple of RBIs as well. And he'll take the pitch away for a ball. 59 walks and 168 innings to go along with 174 strikeouts for Odorizzi last year. He is 0-2 against the Orioles, both last year, and that's his lifetime mark as well. He has a jumping on that one and foul back into the screen. A one ball, two strike count. Yeah, there are the power zones, and that's where he got that changeup off of Chris Archer. I mean, two of the better at bats uh, in this series. Again, we're in only in the third game of the year. It was Diaz, a 10 pitch at bat, hit a home run to right center, and then Logan Forsythe, 11 pitch. Hit a home run to left center last night for the Rays. Shift put on, don't need it there. He got him to chase the pitch away and gets a strikeout. Well, he didn't really have the uh, the splitter, and that's what that was. It's kind of like a splitter or change. It now, one of his teammates who's on the disable list, and that's Alex Cobb, has probably uh, one of the better change up splits in baseball. Struck out, what, I think he threw it 37%. So, you know, Jake learned from him, and that gives him a pitch that not only can get the ground ball, but you can do what he just did, which is strike people out. Better as he gets the first out of the inning here is Pierce. Steve just putting on a show here and garnering lots of attention around Major League Baseball. At least the DH in the ball game tonight. Three for seven, two home runs, and three RBIs to start the year for the Orioles. Pitch will be taken down low for a ball. He uh, has joined a select group of those who have homered in the first two ball games of a season for the Orioles. He could join even a more select group if he can pick up a home run here in this game. Only two players on the Orioles have had home runs in the first three games of a season. Chris Davis did it in 2013 and Frank Robinson did it back in 1966. That one put up in the air may be playable down in that bullpen area long run. Souza's over there and he's got it. A little slip and fall uh, action as well but he puts it away. Yeah, he's over in right center field, so he's got to come a long way. We saw him have a little difficulties uh, opening afternoon here, and then the, you do get the bullpens uh, coming in. There are on the field here. There is the defense: Jennings, uh, Kermeyer, Souza, uh, and then Longoria. A couple of Gold Gloves: Cabrera, Forsyth, the Dykstra. Alan Dykstra comes out of the uh, Mets organization as a uh, minor league free agent, and then uh, Rivera does the catching third straight ball game. Orioles scored in the first inning of each of the first two games, but Arizzi with a chance to shut him down here in this first inning, game three. Snyder, four for five, three RBIs, three walks. On base percentage that you might say is pretty darn good <laughs> through the first two games at uh, 875. Kind of like the approach uh, hit the left, one up the middle, double off the lefty. There's a good fastball. I mean, well located. He hit that uh, over the head of the right fielder. Scissor the other day. So he's hit it to all fields. And then if you want to walk him, he'll take the walk. Scott Gulba mighty happy with what he's seeing out of Snyder here. And that has put him in the lineup for all three ball games in right field. 2 1 delivery on the way. He's throttled back on it 87 miles an hour and gets a two yeah, ball, two strike count. That is such a good pitch because the good splitter, the good change up, you, you just don't see it. And then, of course, the bottom drops out, and that's how you get the strikeouts and the ground balls. Outfield deep, timeout asked for by the catcher. And Gary, he threw it two and one. That was a hitter's count, so he'll throw it in any count, and then they're, they're going to have to try to deal with that. Two, Gary. two, and he got him. So a very solid inning. Oda Rizzi retires the side in order with a couple of strikeouts. We'll look at the numbers for Gonzalez on the mound for the O's.
in this ball game. De Jesus, Sosa, Cabrera, Longoria, Jennings, and Kiermaier. Forsythe, Dykstra, Major League debut, and Rivera. Kiermaier, he's had a home run, a couple of RBIs, part of the three for seven in the series. So uh, Miguel Gonzalez, well on the road again, and uh, not Willie Nelson, not Philip. Bill Collins, but seven consecutive road starts at the end last season, two runs or less. And then we got a Jennings alert. He's gotten six hits, four of them have left the ballpark. So tread carefully and then stay in tune. Again, that September song, uh, four and two with a 162. Is this music night here at the ballpark? Man, not, well, Miguel Gonzalez certainly <laughs> hopes it's music night. Oh, Rizzi kind of made a statement there in the first, didn't yes. he? Yes, yes he like, did. You better have a good night. Sounds of silence. <laughs> Leading it off is to Jesus. He's the designated hitter. The DH has led off in all three of the ball games for the Rays. The Jesus will take it two for three. You just never know in this game. Is to Jesus. He'd been shuttled back to the bench. They tried to move him. He, his place in right field was lost to a younger player. He was going to be a backup player. And what do you know? One at bat, first game, player injured. He's back in the lineup, and now they need him. And uh, counting on him, Kevin Cash is to be able to get things done, even though he came out of spring training as just a role player. Yeah, I had a couple of home runs in the spring. Uh, you know, we were talking to him down at the cage, and he said, Are you playing? He said, No. And then, of course, you have the injury, and he does. He gets a base hit. I said, You love those three and one counts, don't you? <laughs> he says, Oh, two will be all about. Yeah, if you can get yourself into it. But yeah, he is making $6 million. And, and that's, that's kind of the. Uh, the high price spread down here in Tampa. You know, their payroll, what, from 82 million to down around 70 this year. He is two for six, lifetime off Gonzalez. Bit of a shift in the infield, not completely over though. And the pitch will be taken up high. Two ball, two strike count. Here in this ballpark, pretty good numbers. Gonzalez has been an outstanding road pitcher, six and four, 3.27 on the road for him last year. Five career starts here. He's three and one with a two six ERA in this ballpark. Jammed him a little bit and foul back by days. Yeah, well, you got Ryan uh, Lavarnway doing the catching. Uh, Caleb Joseph the first two games and he slid right on the inside corner and it's good to see because Miguel's got four pitches. He's got a splitter, a little bit like Odorizzi. That's a strikeout ground ball. He's got the curveball slider and then for him to be successful, he needs to use that fastball to see him form see both sides of the plate once again inside corner. Two two delivery on the way, then that'll be foul back. The Jesus hanging tough, and the count of two balls and two strikes. Gonzalez with that ten and nine mark last year. He's thirty and twenty one in his career, with a four and three lifetime mark against Tampa Bay and a four oh three ERA against the Rays. Seventy two percent effective in retiring leadoff batters last year. That's a big number. That'll be in the dirt, so it'll be worked full on the foul balls by De Jesus, and it's three and two. Gonzalez will try and uh, get done what Tillman did in the first ball game, going six and two thirds. Chen struggled, started really well last night, but lasted only four and a third innings. Kind of fell apart on him. There's Tillman, and a swing and another foul ball back. And we're going to have at least. Eight, nine pitches thrown in this at bat. Well, Start that's a ball game. Yeah, I mean, that's really uh, kind of how they got to Chen last night. Maybe not his best stuff, velocity wise, command wise. Seven pitches to get out of the first inning, and then they they just kept fouling pitches off. And, you know, Derek Shelton, the hitting instructor, saying we just we want to make the other guy work, and they made Chen work a lot last night. Three two delivery on the way, going to make him work some more. He got way around on that, fouls it off. Down into the bullpen. So you could see the for David Diaz, who's in his 12th year in the big leagues, it's out over the plate. But right there, that ball was in, and he, he turned on it. He's got a quick bat. He yeah. goes through the strike zone, a veteran in a hurry. Well, you know what the pitch sequence is here, and you'd love to be able to throw him a splitter. Hasn't thrown it yet, but on the other hand, you also don't want to walk him. So it may not be a pitch he trusts at this juncture of the game. 277. Career major league average for DeJesus. 3 2 delivery on the way to him, and he gets under that, pops it up to right field. Jonathan Scopes going back. He'll be called off. Snyder is there for the other. Hey, look at the Oriole defense here at the Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. Diazza Jones and Snyder. Adam with four gold gloves. Machado, platinum glove two years ago. The best of the gold glovers. Flaherty, Scope Davis, and then uh, Ryan LeBarnway having a chance to play. 
Davis started uh, this season as the DH, getting that one game suspension done, then playing in the ball game last night at an 0 for 3 as the designated hitter. Now back in the lineup playing at first base. And those were the plans all along by Buck Show Walter, and that's exactly what's happened here. Infield will move around a little bit playing uh, the youngster to pull. Souza will take the pitch. He was fooled on it at 75 miles an hour. He got locked up on that one. It is in there for a strike. Then a one for seven here in the series. Dallas looking for a clean inning to start the ball game. It is the 0 1 to him, and that's going to miss inside. Orioles get the head home, of course. Day off tomorrow. Friday will be the home opener for the Orioles. Bud Norris and Mark Burley, the scheduled starters against Toronto, Friday, 3 o'clock. One ball, one strike delivery, and that's foul back. Be interesting to uh, see the development of this young player. They put not pressure, I mean, pressure is when you're trying to find a job to feed your family, but they put an emphasis on the need for him to succeed this season if the Rays are going to succeed. He and really, that. yeah, when, and he's, a, he's, a, he's an old rookie at 26. Yeah. There you go. Base hit in the center field. But on the other hand, I mean, all you do is you mentioned that when he played you know, 21 at bats uh, with the Nats, made the great play to keep Jordan Zimmerman uh, no hitter intact in the ninth inning. And he can do a lot of things. He can run the bases, uh, he can hit for power. He's a pretty good defensive guy, good arm. But at the end of the day, he said, I, I'm just happy that they, they do believe in me enough mm -hmm. to, to give me the at bats, and that's all you can ask as a young player. So the base hit will bring Cabrera to the plate. As Drubal Cabrera, one for eight in an RBI. He has hit Gonzalez at a two for five clip, with one of those two hits being a home run. A switch hitter batting third in the lineup ahead of Longoria. Pretty good lead at first. Souza, and that'll draw a throw. Yeah, the one thing that uh, Miguel Gonzalez does do, and you know, a lot of it could, could be the fact that he does pitch in Camden Yards, is you know, home runs 25 last year in 159 innings. But usually they are solo home runs. Bay Steelers 12 out of 14 against him last year. One down, that ball fouled off the other way. He had to go down and reach for it and couldn't pull it. As Drupal Cabrera. Switch hitting shortstop, 0 1 count and one down. Around Major League Baseball with the speed up for games, uh, they've knocked about 20 minutes off the average time for games that have been played so far coming into today. Not the Orioles. <laughs> Orioles are keeping the number up. First game was 3 0 1, 3 22 for the ball game last night. Here's the 0 1 delivery, came inside with him. Giddy up on that one at 91, but missed with it. And a one ball, one strike count on Cabrera. Tampa Bay trying to avoid the sweep here in this series. They've got to go to interleague play. They've got Miami and Miami coming up on Friday after a day off, so they immediately go to interleague play. One ball, one strike count. Not a big lead at first. Throw back, and he's back easily. And then they go up and get back in the American League East up in Toronto. It's a team that has six rookies, the Blue Jays, and a number of new players that, you know, Russell Martin, Josh Donaldson, that appear to be impact players if they stay healthy. Orioles will get a chance to see them coming up at home. One ball, one strike count, pitch on the way, and that'll be inside. So Gonzalez with a two ball, one strike count on Cabrera. With Longoria waiting as the on deck batter. We talked about it last night, the patience we've seen early on in the season by these hitters. Pitching coach Dave Wallace hoping. Well, what you're trying to do is to stay away from a ball that he can pull into the hole. And that's why you really have to command your stuff. You can see the target right here, low and away. If he tries to pull it, maybe you get the double play. If you get in the middle of the plate, he hits it into right field. And Susan Jr. can really run. So that's probably going to be a first and third. And then you have their best hitter coming up. Last season, Cabrera hit 250 off lefties and 236 off right handers. He had 11 home runs that came against the right handers, 11 out of 14. 3 1 count, one down. Double play depth and the timeout and a little lob toss up. Timeout was granted at the plate. Buck Showalter was talking about Major League Baseball taking a very close look at every at bat in every game. Here in the first week, he said, We got a lot of messages. 
regarding our players who were not staying in the box the way they were supposed to. And uh, I had to tell them. Didn't really notice it in the game. Runner goes. That ball will be ripped foul. But if you don't keep that one foot in, unless it's one of the exception situations, Major League Baseball is going to send out a notice to the managers telling them, here's what your guys aren't doing. And they usually do it right after the game, yeah. from my understanding. I mean, I was watching Susie hit last night, and of course it was a, turned out six to nothing, turned out to be six to five, and he would keep his. Uh, Foot in, but even when he got two strikes, he's looking at the third base coach mm -hmm. because you do have to look down for signs. Yep. Three ball, two strike count, one away. Now the full shift employed in the infield. Runner Susie, you got to believe he's going again. There he goes. Ball hit into the shift, and it's a base hit. Into right field, Snyder going to third. Susie says is going to be held up. It'll be a single as the throw comes into second base. So the Rays cover the corners here in the first inning with one out on the Cabrera base hit. Yeah, a little curveball. You can see you start the runner, but he hits it so sharply, Scope can't get it. So a nice hitting, and it creates the uh, what I thought was one of the toughest things in the world, where you got to face a, a number four hitter, whether it's Longoria or anybody that you had to face, with a, a runner at third. Now the double play is in order, but you don't have to get a base hit to score a run, and this is what offenses want. So Evan Longoria will get the chance. There's what he's done in the series. He's had a seven for 24 and a home run lifetime off Gonzalez. Infield now, of course, will play for two. They do play him to pull in the infield. Gonzalez has pitched to him in the dirt. LaVarnway makes the nice stop on it and will hold the runner at first base. Yeah, that ball almost got by him. Might have the last thing. I mean, he bounced it. Checking over with Dave Wallace. LaVarmway gets the signs on what Dave Wallace wants to do as far as the pitcher holding a runner. Throw over, step off, hold it a little longer. 1 0 count. Cabrera, pretty good lead at first base. Longoria mm. had a weight on it, fouled it back. 76 on the gun on that one. Yeah, a little curveball. He has a good one. Doesn't use it that much. Right here, he's, of course, Longoria, you know what he's doing. We talked about it all last night. The Orioles did a good job. Runners in third, less than two outs, getting the ball in the air. Runners in scoring position in the series for the Rays. They are three for 12. One ball, one strike delivery outside. They had a tough time of it last year when they finished 13th with a 241 average with runners in scoring position. That's one of the things Kevin Cash has keyed on the start of this season to pump the offense up. Got to get some of these guys in, especially in these situations. Two ball one strike count off first and third Gonzalez delivers and that'll be outside. So take a look at your Jeep inside the numbers and we talked about uh, what this is what the Orioles did all the pitchers uh, 217 and that was their opponent and the starters number one 220 and the league average is 251 so it gives you an idea for Miguel Gonzalez Chen 203 173 for Bud Norris. Runner goes from first, and that'll be foul back. Now you can't keep getting into these uh, three and one counts because every time you do, what is the opponent, or the manager going to do? Kevin Gash is going to start the runners, try to stay out of the double play. So even if you do throw that ground ball, you're not going to turn them. And already up to 25 pitches thrown here to record one out. Tampa Bay last year in these situations runner at third less than two outs or 13th in the American League in average. Then you have a guy waiting on deck with six hits four home runs and that's in Desmond Jennings. Runner should be going again at first base Cabrera. Gonzalez may try and throw over and try and catch him moving. He doesn't runner goes foul back again. A very long inning. Gloria Miguel Gonzalez a lot of foul balls to Jesus had a big at bat getting it done. Cabrera fought off some and now Longoria is doing the same thing. And Miguel you know, stayed healthy this spring didn't have an outstanding spring. Really didn't get a lot of innings. His last uh, start was against a minor league team. He said boy they were waiting for my fastball. He said even when I made good pitches. So now you face a team that has been very pesky in these first two games. Do it again on the three two to Longoria. Runner Cabrera off again. Ball whacked down the line. That's going to be a foul ball. Take a hop into the pavilion down there, and it will stay at three balls and two strikes. Well, what a workout. Yeah, well, three and two on David uh, De Azus, and he got him out with a, throwing him a three two splitter. 
But now all of a sudden it's going to be very difficult because of the count to double anybody up. It's going to have to be a rocket maybe to scope and then you flip it over to Flaherty. But other than that starting the runner unless it's a line drive and one of the infielders. Even a ground ball the infield is going to probably get a run in. I think you might throw over in there. The luck throw to third. Good move as they had. Sosa going back into the bag at third after the look. Yeah, the, the, the throw. Yeah, yeah, the Orioles work on this uh, just about every day of spring training, and you watch him watch him step off. At least if he's supposed to step off, because otherwise I thought it was a balk. I'm not sure he took, and you can see right there, Sousa almost gets picked off. Sousa looking. What was that? Is it, you don't see it very often. So it stays at three and two. That's worth a worth an effort right there. Only one down. And these two base runners on. Try and sneak an out in. Cabrera getting a lot of running in over there at first base. Three two. He's gone again and walked him. So the bases are loaded with one away. A chance for the Rays to have a big first inning. Jennings will stand in. Gonzalez will look for the ground ball to get out of this. Jennings, the two for seven so far in the young season. Well, he's As coming up. Yeah, he's hit Gonzalez yeah. hard. Well, yeah, the four home runs and six uh, six hits. Coming off a great spring, you know, he was usually the Orioles would see him leading off, so they moved him down in the lineup depending if it's righty or lefty, fifth against left-hander, sixth against right-hander tonight. And the, the breaking ball yeah. in there. But you know the bad news you've had to throw 29 pitches. Bad news is Jennings up but the good news is if you do get that ground ball even though he runs well you can on the turf turn two. 250 with runners in scoring position last year for Jennings. Bases loaded one out and the 0 1 delivery to him will be in the dirt. Lavarnway goes down to block that one and a one ball one strike out from Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah. Gonzalez has always done well against the East, but Showalter's always tried to get him in ball games where he's playing against the American League East. He's had 40 career appearances, 37 as a starter, and he is 16 and 9 against the Eastern Division opponents. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, mm -hmm. and that's outside. Yeah, when when he doesn't get the front shoulder closed right out of his hand, it's it's really a meaningless pitch because it's a ball. And that's the that right there. He very quick to the plate, never quite got himself loaded, and then all of a sudden you lose your command, maybe that little extra uh, life on your fastball, and now you get into another hitter's count. Two one. You look for one to drive. Ground ball's got to go to short. Flaherty, there's one. Jonathan scope, and he didn't get him in a run. Will score Ooh. that close. I don't know at first base. Buck Showalter comes to the top step. Yeah, I mean that looked very, very close. I mean, Scope just a rocket. The Flaherty has to go to his right just enough, but look at this exchange. And right here, I mean, right there, I don't know. They call him out at second, and we'll see if they think it's close enough to uh, again speed. Buck is waiting for the his replay helper Ben Worthen to let him know whether he ought to. Go after it or not. He's got 30 seconds to make a decision. Boy. And he is. Yeah. So there will be a review here, a challenge on the call at first base as to whether or not he was safe or out. And here's a big challenge. Yeah, very, very close. I mean, it appeared by my eye that he was out but again it does the ball get into the glove does it get into the back of the glove we saw all those things taken into and here's consideration where, as every good attorney knows this is where the burden of evidence yeah. matters because in order to overturn the call which was safe you have to have evidence conclusive evidence yeah, he was that out. the call was wrong if it's inconclusive the call stands He's out about a quarter of well it can't be a quarter of a step because Dick Hall who used to pitch for us and went to Swarthmore much smarter than I said look how long the stride is. Now, I think the foot's not down the balls in the glove. I think they turned the double play. But he said a stride it's not by you can't say by a half a step because the strides usually about what four or five feet that one was. <laughs> yeah. 
There you see the ball enters yeah, the glove. Yeah, now he's out. Have control it's not right even there. down. Yes, he did. He does. Yeah. He's out. He's out. Here's the call. Well, he is. Oh, safe! Wow. Wait. wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait, wait. He's out. Yeah, I don't know what that safe sign he's was. Out. So the run does not count. It is a double play to end the inning and a big review call. But Showalter asking for it. They went back to New York and this is what they saw in the frame by frame in the glove foot not down double play inning over no runs on two hits bases loaded one out and the Rays do not score. Orioles will have Jones Davis and Machado coming up. Major League Baseball. <laughs> Boy, what a big double play to get him out of the inning, Buck Showalter with the challenge, and you saw it a 6 4 3 double play, and again, you saw the importance of that Jonathan Scope arm at second base. That cannon of his can make a difference on a play like that. Breaking ball will be in. Odorizzi working against Jones. Adam has started out with the one for seven, couple of RBIs as Scope in that middle. He's got a quick release and a lot on it. Ball will be jammed a little bit, pulled the back back second base. Forsyth. Jones retired. Put away here in the second inning. Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Wendy Varnell from Woodbine. You've won 500 for being selected. You get 500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play baseball buck scratch offs. You could win up to $50,000 instantly or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the Maryland Lottery contestant of the game. Find out how at mdlottery.com slash baseball. Wendy, good luck. Pretty good series to be a contestant in the way the Orioles have been hitting home runs, four of them in the first two games. Here is Chris Davis. Chris with the 0 for 3 in his return to the Orioles lineup. Now back at first base. Yeah, a little check swing down the third baseline. He was telling Evan Longoria, you're not supposed to be there. <laughs> you're supposed to be right where you are now. Oh, one, there's yeah. the bunt. Pushed it and way foul. Yeah, see, when Longoria, now they'll. Uh, They'll change positions. Uh, the shortstop Cabrera, who was over here, he'll move over to here. And what you do is you maybe have a little more range by your shortstop. And Longoria, third baseman, now is playing second base. Sort of. The second baseman's playing right field. Yeah. And a swing and a miss, and none of it matters if you get a strikeout. And Odorizzi's got three. Yeah, well, Jake's got good enough stuff to not to, to trust his fastball. And then when he gets the two strikes, here's the Alex Cobb effect. There's a splitter. Splitter change. Cobb you know, fighting forearm problems. He will uh, probably be back in May. Smiley may be the end of Drew Smiley, another one of their starters, the left hander. Column A, what had pneumonia, another one of their starters. So three of them out. Manny Machado takes it down low. James Loney was added to the DL by the Rays today. Dykstra, who's playing at first base, called up to take his place. That'll be added to the 40 man roster. It is uh, the right side tweak that took him out of the ball game, and as we say in baseball, if it's a tweak, it's an oblique. One ball, one strike count on Manny Machado. 
Two down, nobody on, and fouled off the end of the bat, cued over by the dugout. Yeah, the report I had gotten at least uh, early on was it, it wasn't oblique, it was just muscular problems in the right side. But again, if you get one of those obliques, they can last for months, weeks, one week. One, two, delivery on the way. Down the line again. Count will stay at a ball at two strikes. Orioles home on uh, Friday. The gates will open at 12. That's an hour earlier than normal. 12 o'clock gates open for the ball game, which will be at three. Bud Norris and Mark Burley are the scheduled starters for the Orioles home opener against Toronto. One, two, delivery. Followed up by Evaldo Jimenez and Aaron Sanchez. And then Chris Tillman will get his second start against Drew Hutchison. Both of them won their initial starts. For the Orioles and Jays respectively. So that's the first series. The Orioles heading home after the ball game tonight, the day off tomorrow. Swing and then way out in front of that one and pulls it foul. Manny Machado looking to get it going here. He's not had a hit on the young season, nor has he had a hit off Rodorizzi. He's 0 for 7 against the Rays right hander. Outfield very deep on Manny. One two delivery to him and yeah, frame a, for an extra second. Yeah, Rivera, a big article in USA Today. Uh, other than Buster Posey, this was the guy that they called a pitch pitch presentation. The way they presented to the umpire, second best in baseball last year. Pitch will be in the dirt on that one. Three and two. It is something that's worked on. John Russell works with the Oriole catchers on that. The presentation, how you catch the ball. Matters as oh, to how yeah. the umpire sees it. Yeah, Rick Dempsey's always talked about having a slight turn of your wrist brings the ball into the zone versus away from it. 3 2 delivery and a ground ball to short. As Drubal Cabrera, six in a row retired. Uh, what a reason. We go to the bottom half of the second inning here at the Trop. The O's fans are doing some dogs. Attention. Slow down. Watch for pedestrians, even where least expected. Be street smart. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, with you as the Orioles anxiously awaiting the return home. Chance to settle in for the players tomorrow. They'll make a very brief visit to the ballpark. Rick Showalter said it's not really even a workout. Just come see your locker and say hi, and then go home. So we'll see. I think some of the starting pitchers actually. Uh, a left today. Mm -hmm. Ground ball, first pitch, first base. Davis Gonzalez covers, and they get the out on Kiermeyer. One away. Well, the Orioles winning the first two, 6 2 win in uh, the first one. Three home runs, Deaza, Pierce, and uh, Flaherty. Tillman outstanding, six and two thirds, only one earned run. And then game two, Orioles had a 6 0 lead, ended up winning it by one, four runs first. Couple in the second held on with the bullpen doing a great job. Our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Yeah, the first game was all one nothing going into the sixth, and then the Orioles, the Yaza hit the home run. 
and it added another one the Pierce home run so it was four nothing at one time second game six nothing at one time. Inside corner strike taken Forsyth Logan Forsyth he has had a home run. A couple of RBIs here in the series. Yeah, Dexter on deck 32 pitches to get three outs and one pitch one out here in the second kind of like that. So does the starter. Gonzalez. Knowing now he's got to be much more efficient. He's he's going to hang around in this ball game than he was in that first inning. Yeah, well, last year it's really never. He's not wild, wild. They just had good at bats and gets the ground ball yeah. to short this time. Flaherty's up, makes Man. the throw, and two away. Well, the regular season indeed is here, and you still have time to secure your spot to see the action with the Orioles' full of partial season plan. Members enjoy exclusive ticket savings, Major League Baseball's most flexible exchange policy, access to postseason tickets, and a lot of orange carpet benefits. So don't miss out. Visit Orioles.com slash tickets or call 888-848-BIRD. A lot of O's families on hand and fans have got to come down and see the end of spring training in Sarasota, which is only an hour away, and then come up here to St. Petersburg and enjoy the series. Down the line in left field, Daza was playing the other way, so a long, long run, and he's not going to get there. So here's Dykstra. That's his first swing as a major league player, and he now is in the books. As he was called up today to take the spot of Loney, who went on the DL, a uh, veteran. There you see the numbers last year, Triple A. Yeah, really had a nice year. Uh, talking to him down at the cage, comes out of the Mets organization. He said, actually, the batting, I think one of the batting instructors, Luisa Natera, was his double A guy coming through the minors and shortened the swing. We hear that all the time. I mean, Susan would tell you the same thing. But again, this is a big, strong guy. And, and I guess maybe if you want to compare him to Chris Davis, good power the other way. Likes to get the arms extended. 27 years yeah. old, big swing and a miss. And no, he is not related to Lenny Dykstra, which is the first question he generally gets. And a one ball, two strike count with. Two down. So Gonzalez trying to get through this one quickly. Shift on against power hitting left handed batter playing first. That'll be down low. Good take on it. Two ball, two strike count. That's why you stay ready in baseball, whatever level you may end up at at the start of the season. You just don't know. With the injuries so frequent in Major League Baseball nowadays, players get called up triple A, double A. 2 2 delivery on the way and reached and fouled it back into the screen. Yeah, and I think when you probably don't, I'm not sure if Miguel's ever faced him, but the Orioles probably have some advanced scouting. But right there, when you make your pass ball in the outside corner, even when you get two strikes and he covers it, you go, okay, it's pretty good play coverage. And then you see how long the arms are. You know he likes to get them extended out over the plate. And he got him. So Gonzalez will get the first strikeout, comes back retiring the side in order. We completed two here as the Orioles slip for the sweep.
destination for a culinary adventure. Their fresh local seafood and eclectic array of world-class cuisine. Savor Sarasota Restaurant Week coming up June 1 through 14, celebrating its 10th year. Visit SavorSarasota.com. Very summer-like day here in the Tampa Bay area and in Sarasota with the temperatures in the sun up in the 90s and in the shade in the low 80s today. Inside here, of course, perfect. Here is Dave Wallace talking to Wei and Chen last night starter. Ever in progress teaching. Well, you certainly saw that last year. Joe Bunt, strike two. You know, the Orioles struggled with their pitching in uh, 2013, went from 93 to 85 wins, and you figure, oh, Wallace and Dom Chi, they're, they're going to come in here and make a lot of changes, and they took it very slowly. And then, really paid paid the dividends as uh, the pitching really from June on was as good as anybody in the American League. Flaherty twice showing the bunt that one is fouled off and a two strike count. Flaherty Lavarnway and Jonathan Scope do up against Odorizzi. Now Longoria can move way back in the shift at shortstop. Here's the 0 2 delivery on the way and the fastball will come inside one ball two strike count. Yeah, Oda Rizzi, I mean, he had 31 starts last year. Seven of those where he uh, only gave up, well, that three of them, I guess, what, one hit going into the seventh inning on occasion. He got shut out six times, so 11 and 13 maybe is a little misleading. And then down here, when you have a 262 ERA, you're doing some pitching. It was on the road where he's going to have to make an adjustment. One and two. And we'll miss a little bit down low. So it goes to two balls and two strikes against Flaherty, who started all three of these ball games, second and short, getting some early playing time for the Orioles. 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss on one probably up high, and that's four K's for the reason. Well, but when you face Alex Cobb, and these guys are very much alike, you always have the split change in the back of your mind. So 91 becomes about 95, and you were talking about it. You're trying to get the, the swing a little bit shorter, choking up, but a good fastball hitter sometimes misses a fastball if you have to protect for all three of his pitches. So LeBardway will get his chance as an Oriole as he comes in, having been with the Red Sox and Triple A Pawtucket last year. He will file that one back. LeBardway played only nine games uh, with the Red Sox last season. All the rest of it at Pawtucket and hit 283 there in 62 ball games. Out of Yale, where he set the home run mark at the time he graduated as the all time Ivy League. Home run leader that has since been broken. In the air to right field, hit on a line at the warning track, says it does not get it. LaVarnway is going to make a turn and head to second base. Throw will come in, not in time. So LaVarnway has got a double on a rising line drive. They had the uh, Hammond bone, which is that crook bone in his left hand, so he missed some time last year. The power numbers went down, but well, he just flicks that uh, high cutter. You can see him just pull it. That's the little cut fastball that moves a little right to left. It stays up though. And then it looks like he has a track on it. He's not, you know, not playing that deep and puts it right over his head. So the first base hit, first runner in scoring position here in the third. Jonathan Scope, the RBI chance. Scope, one for four here in the series. He's faced Odorizzi twice and had two hits off him. No score in the ball game. Orioles getting their first hit, and the pitch will be taken away for a ball. Jonathan, a number he would like to improve on, the 220 he had last year with runners in scoring position. Amazingly, he had 109 chances in these situations with the Orioles. That's the third highest last season. Adam Jones was well out on top at 153 chances, and then Chris Davis had 114 and then scope. They were the only three with a three digit mark. Well, it's been a project uh, with Scott Coolbaugh, the new hitting instructor, smooth out the swing. Maybe a little shorter, said it was more like a windshield wiper, very quick. So just kind of get more of a rhythm. I thought when we were talking to him, I said, get two hits. He said, no, no. He said, I'd like to get two hits, but what I want to do, and I think this is the effect of. Of any hitting instructor, but especially Scott Kulba, hey, I want to, I want to have four quality of bats tonight. And when you start having the quality of bats, especially with his power, 
ability to use the whole field. That's when the hits come. Does he have power? He, he lashes long balls. He comes through so quickly in that strike zone. One ball, two strike count runner at second. One out. And we'll take that one up high. What are easy trying to get him to chase yeah. on that two and two. Well, when you uh, made your living pitching, you notice little things, and he's a lot wider with his stance. You know, hands might be a little bit different. But at the end of the day, can you get that barrel of the bat to the ball? The more often you can do that, the, the better you're going to hit. Two two delivery to him and a swing and a foul ball. Let's take a look at the uh, numbers. Express stat by Express Care, a LifeBridge Health Partner. For locations, visit whyweightintheer.com. Highest average runner in scoring position. Yeah, the league average, uh, it's important to have that, is 251. So obviously the Tigers, 31 points over it. The Royals struck out the least amount of teams. They did a great job. So did the Orioles with the most home runs. Don't steal a lot of bases. 2 2 delivery. Yeah. Ooh, wow. oh, that's got to hurt. Right on the forearm. So hit by a pitch. Jonathan Scope. And but Showalter will trail. Richie Vansell's the trainer following him down the line. Yeah, just a fastball that runs in, and then boy, it gets him right in the forearm, maybe a little bit below the elbow. A lot of all the nerves running from your shoulder through your elbow. Question of can you stay in the ball game? Of course, as the game goes along, as sports fans know, it's that's when you'll know whether or not you're going to be able to stay in the game. I think the one thing that's changed, I have to talk to Richie uh, Van Sells. I mean, he, you know, the assistant trainer when I was playing, he's been here, seems like forever. But remember the old days they used to bring out the, the little spray can? This, well, it's a, it was a little canister and they put the freeze on it. Yeah. It doesn't seem like they do that anymore. Obviously, they're going to ice it as soon as he can. But he's got some innings to play before that. So, runners on at first and second base now, only one away. And here's Alejandro de Aza. The Orioles here in this series have gone four for 11 with runners in scoring position. Getting the big hits and the big innings they've had. Now trying to get one right here in the top of the third with no score. Line at second base, the double, LeVar and Way. Jonathan Scope hit by a pitch at first. Swing and a miss on a Taylor down and away to Deaza. And if you're sitting at home and you're going, well, geez, why is he swinging a ball in the dirt? Because you don't know what's going in the dirt. It, it, the the split-finger fastball is so effective if thrown properly. The ball tumbles out of your hand. The ball has kind of this rotation you don't very difficult to pick up and it just drops. Here's the one-one delivery on the way, Deaza. We'll take that one up high. And a two ball one strike count. Steve Pierce said it after the ball game last night. Six nothing lead ends up being six five. What'd you think of the ball game, Steve? Typical game between the Orioles and the Rays. And here it's happening again. These two teams tend to play just grinded out baseball games. And you can never can tell at any portion of a game what it's going to look like. That one will stay in the air. Souls are there to get it, and the runner's got to go back to first and second. Yeah, it looks like he's still having a little trouble uh, when you come out of the you know playing in Florida to a dome stadium. And had to adjust the glove right at the last minute. Of course, the ball might have knuckled a little bit. So Pierce comes up. Can he do more damage? Steve Pierce flat out to right field his first time up, two down, and a two on. Pierce with the two for four now, including a home run against Odorizzi. Yeah, the uh, the May 20 or the uh, August 25th game where he threw four home runs. Steve Pierce did hit one of them. That'll be taken down low. Take a look at our Major League Notebook. He's been nicknamed the Lakeland Launcher. He's from Lakeland, Florida, versus the Rays. 315, eight home runs here at the Trop. 340, five home runs. Look at the OPS, 1.18. So the Lakeland Launcher is at the plate. 1-0. He's been nicknamed that by. One of the radio stations here, sports radio stations, following Pierce. 
inviting him to leave the city and head back to Baltimore anytime he likes. They will pay for the. Well, trip. that's what Evan Longoria came running by. He said, "We got to get you out of the lineup." And I was standing next to him uh, what two days ago, and I said, "Boy, he worked too hard to get into the lineup, yeah. and he just smiled going anywhere." No. Well, you know, you can see what they're trying to do. He's such a good high ball hitter. Home run game number one fastball hanging curveball yesterday for the home run so they're trying to stay down. One one will yeah. be fouled off and a one ball two strike count Steve Pierce long ball. Yeah this is the Archer home run only gave up 12 all of last season in 194 innings so he kept it fair and then last night curveball you can see him load. And that spanks it out in left center. One ball two strike count LeVarne way a one out double still hit by a pitch. Now there are two away with two on. Fans into it for their right hander. Here's the one two delivery. That'll be way up high, almost overthrown. And how do you get good hitters out? And Steve Pierce has uh, certainly evolved into one of those strong pull hitter. Even though we saw him take breaking balls the other way, you make your pitches and take your chances. And if you know a guy's a high ball hitter, you know that if you get it in the middle of the plate, he's going to have a good swing. He lucked out against Diazza because he hung a splitter. I mean, that ball could have easily been a double into the gap. 2 2 the count. Runners off first and second and swung on, foul tipped, tagged out. He did not foul tip it. But Ariza gets his fifth strikeout. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left on baseball game scoreless. Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com and buy your local Mercedes deals. Here at the drop. Sunset time, the Pelican after dinner out there. Jonathan Scope hit on that elbow. You see him rubbing it a little bit. Talked with Manny Machado on the elbow, and it'll, obviously it hurts, but staying in the ball game at Sega Base. That'll bring up Rivera. Number nine in the order, followed by DeJesus and Souza. Rivera with the 0 for 8. He's only faced Gonzalez a couple of times and gone one for two in his career. And the pitch will be outside to him for a ball. Orioles trying to go 3 and 0 to start the year against the Tampa Bay team. Made it real close in the ball game yesterday. 1 0 delivery and really fooling off speed delivery. One arm helicopter swing on that one. One ball, one strike count. We're talking about salaries that have been released, opening day payrolls. Tampa Bay 28th at 76 million. 1 1 delivery. Baltimore Orioles, middle of the pack, 17th, 110 million. Dodgers, of course, setting the all time mark, opening day roster payroll. 272 million 789,000. No one's ever had a higher payroll for opening day. One, two, and he got him, laid it in, and tied him up. Yeah, knee high, outside corner, and Russ Renee certainly knows that. 
Collins. That's where he wants Odorizzi to, to live. But they've already seen that Miguel, he's done a nice job of establishing him. Only, I mean, he took, what, 32 pitches to get out of the first, a double play to Jennings with the bases loaded. But he know he'll throw all his pitches. So in the back of their mind, uh, he's certainly not predictable. One down. Here's to Jesus. Flat out to right field. His first time up. If you're wondering, the lowest payroll goes to the Miami Marlins. They're at 68 and a half million. The difference between the Dodgers and the Marlins is 205 million dollars. That one a tapper. That's a bunt, and that's a base hit. Good play by Davis to get off the bag and make sure it didn't go wild. Yeah, not a uh, wise decision to throw that because the minute the ball dies right there, you know it's a base hit. Left-handed batter coming out of the box, closer to first base. Little splitter, he just got accused and they got rid of it quickly enough, but Chris did come off the bag. And you could see Scope backing him up just in case he got away. So that'll be hit number three for the Rays in the game with one away here in the third. Sousa's has picked up one of the hits. He had a base hit in his first at bat. Infield will move to that double play depth. Gonzalez will get the pitch in there for a strike. Miguel has been over the uh, seasons at the major league level as effective working out of the stretch as far as opponent batting average is concerned. As he has been working out of the full windup, not much difference in opponent batting average. 0 1. A look over and a pitch outside. Well, you made a good point. Uh, when you get 30, 30 starts, 31 starts, and they only attempt to steal, what, 14 times? 12 out of 12 success. You're holding them on pretty well. I mean, you're certainly cognizant, aware of the running game, something. Well, show Walter, Dave Wallace, pitching coach, certainly make him do. You have a good throw and catcher. One ball, one strike delivery, and that almost got him. That one tailed in down by the knees in the end. And the count goes to two and one. Take a look again, big, tall guy, and that ball way inside. Hitters count here. Two ball, one strike count. Davis holding the runner. Not a big lead. Throw over. Davis had to scoop that one out on a one hopper in the throw by Gonzalez. Yes, is it no different than a lot of young hitters? You come through the minor leagues, the pitching gets better, they could hit their spots, you get a long swing. As you go up, they take advantage of. And, uh, it's asking about how he shortened his swing. He said, I don't really care where my hands are. Where I, what I care about is the bad hit. And I remember uh, Terry Crowley was hitting instructor here for years, great pinch hitter. He used to always say it's it's point A to point B. The bat hit is A and the ball is B. And what's the path of the bat to it? And the short swings get to it very quickly. 25 year old at the plate with a 2 1 count, one down. And that one's going to be outside. So Gonzalez falls behind him three balls and uh, one strike. Look down to third base see whether or not he might be asked to take here in this situation. Third base coach Montoya with the signs. For him. Charlie Montoya down there runners going and he walked it. Yeah not even close. Two walks two on one down. On Saturday, you can enjoy the season's first night game at Oriole Park. The Birds take on the Jays 705. First 20,000, 15 and over, get the 2014 AL East Champions Wall Art. It's an orange canvas wall art, perfect to hang, and a great collector's item for you to celebrate the great season last year. Get your tickets at Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Here's Cabrera, base hit his first time up. Fan there collecting Orioles clothing. One down. Floppy hat night. Good floppy hat. I have to look for that date. <laughs> Pitch on the way by Gonzalez. He jammed him. 
What a jam shot that was. Scope is there, and he's got a big second out. Well, a nice adjustment because the last time up, he took a 3 1 curveball and hit it into the uh, to right field. So this time they just go with a different pitch, try to read the bat from at bat to at bat. Does get it in on his fist with an easy pop up. So Longoria with two on. Longoria had two on in the first inning when he drew a walk. It's another shot at it here to Jesus at second base. So he's on a first real good speed. And of course, moving on anything hit here with two down. No score in the ball game. We're in the bottom half of the third inning. Gonzalez, couple of walks, couple of strikeouts so far. Pickoff look to second base. The Jesus back. One of the most walks that Evan has ever had was uh, all the way back in 2011 with 80, and he's already walked three times already. And he's not the guy that you want to pitch to, but two outs and a couple of guys on, you have to here, unless you do what you did the last time. He'll take the pitch away for a ball. Hey, you go through a lineup, you go, this is the guy that I don't want. The BG. Now it comes a lot easier if you get the guys out in front of them and behind them. But both times he's had people on base and Miguel has pitched around him. 1 0 the count on him. Strike taken on an outside corner. Longoria does not agree. There with Cabrera. Looks like he may be getting ready to come into the ball game, whether that would be. For Jonathan Scope, because of Scope getting hit on that elbow, we'll see. One ball, one strike count. Gonzalez is pitched to him, swung out and missed at 83. Yeah, really nice split figured fastball. So now Longoria down on the count one and two. Now you can just see him split the fingers, the ball tumbles under the bat head. Such a good pitch. You would have liked to have had him put it on the ground in play. One two count. Longoria can't get it upstairs and slams the bat down. Gonzalez gets it done. His third strikeout. Two more left on here in the scoreless game. That is home opener and Hank Aaron past Babe Ruth on the all time home run list 715 coming off the Dodgers starter L Downing and in 1975 Frank Robinson became the first black manager in Major League history his Indians beat the Yankees 5 3 Phil Seggy the GM told him before the game why don't you hit a home run in this first at bat when you're manager he did and he said of all the pennants World Series awards and all star games I've been in this is the greatest thrill on becoming the first African American manager and a player manager at that and he DH'd and hit a home run his first time up. Travis Snyder here in the scoreless ball game 0 3 and 0 for the Rays 0 1 and 0 for the Orioles 4 left on by the Rays 2 by the O's. 
but are easy as walk none and struck out five Snyder one of the strikeout victims. A real good pitchers duel through three even though Gonzalez has had to work a whole lot harder than what Arizzi has to get the outs as far as the number of pitches thrown is concerned. He's gotten it done. Here's the one one delivery that ball in the air to left field. He hit that pretty good. 370 back to the wall and won't make it on the warning track Jennings. Yeah that's one of those balls if you hit it in Camden Yards uh, would be right up against the wall. And he did hit what four or five home runs last year to left field. So he should play well when he gets to hit at home, but here it's pretty routine. As we said, Oda Rizzi, he loves to throw 224 balls in the air, only 145 grounders. So he pitches well here because it uh, if you can get it out of the middle of the plate, a lot of room in the outfield. Only Chris Young had a higher fly ball to ground ball ratio than did Oda Rizzi last year. Popped out Jones first time up one down nobody on. Yeah they went through once. Yeah they went through four signs. Uh, you know, Rivera wanted to come in. He didn't want to do that. Then he wanted to go away. So let's see. Yeah, maybe a little cutter outside corner. Jones got that one <laughs> way up in the air but foul. Yeah well it was a cutter but it didn't get to the outside corner. But at 86 fastball 91 to 93. And I'm trying to launch one right there. Generally, uh, over the history of baseball, the examinations done show that a fly ball pitcher, predominant like Odorizzi is, is effective against a fly ball hitting mm -hmm. team, which the Orioles are. Not predominant, but are. And the pitch is there for a strike. Came back at 91 with a fastball, 0 and 2 on Joe. Yeah, I would have thought they'd been a lot even, you know, like 50 50, but they, I mean, was looking at the numbers. I don't think there was one team in baseball that hit more grounders than, or more fly balls than grounders last year. Yep. You know, Toronto hits a lot of fly balls for obvious reasons, especially at home. And you get big, strong guys that do that. A lot of home runs for both teams, of course. Toronto and the Orioles. When you're doing that, you're getting the ball up in the air. And then the size of the ballparks have a lot to do with it. We don't hit too many home runs at Camden Yards on the ground, so it's hard. Very hard. <laughs> I haven't seen one, but the big fly. One two delivery on the way. Yep, you want to hit the big fly at home. <laughs> and the count goes to do and do. That's the front. I, I, you know, here's a team that, that leads you know, with 211 home runs. The last two years they've led the American League in home runs. Last year the MLB. And they scored more runs on the road last year. Mm -hmm. Two two delivery on the way. And that one lashed foul. You're getting some more hit. Odorizzi was, Jake was so good the first two innings. But, you know, last inning got some balls up. This inning, the same thing. So if you're the Orioles, you're going okay, Miguel. Just keep doing what you're doing, even though it's you really had to work, and maybe he'll make a mistake. And this is the type of guy, 28 home runs, 33, 32 the last three years. So a mistake can get out of the ballpark quickly. Two ball, two strike count. Jones trying to tee one up, and Adam will ground that one towards third base. Big hop played by Longoria. The extra over there at first base. And there are two down here in the fourth inning. Let's take a look at our PNC minor league report. A lot heard from last year in the spring for Henry Uridia. Yeah, a lot bigger, stronger. Comes out of Cuba. They were talking about it the other night uh, in the hotel restaurant today. I guess he tried to escape from Cuba four or five times. And uh, all kinds of difficulties. There's a splitter. Yeah, the other thing I look at Chris Chris Davis's numbers more ground balls than he's ever hit last year. You know, only five or six percent. There goes that during at bat shift. And in a nothing nothing game, they'd probably like have to have him bunt. Oh yeah. Oh one delivery on the way, and that one bounced three feet out in front. Rivera blocking that with the body. And the count goes to one and one. One for eight lifetime for Davis against Odorizzi. Chris, big cuts in the ball game and his return to the lineup last night. He wants some production. He knows the Orioles are looking to him for the long ball, extra base hits, RBI. Scott Coolball working with him during spring training and will be all year long. One one delivery on the way, and that's there for a strike. 
Well, they go back to his days with the Texas Rangers, and I, when uh, Scott was the hitting instructor with the Rangers, and I asked him about Chris, he said, of all the guys he had, had the most strength hitting the ball the other way. That's why I thought he'd be a good hitter. One-two delivery. Yeah, you think you, you you think you make a good pitch. Now you can get the ball up and away, but down, breaking balls in the middle of the plate, so strong, good pitches end up to be fly ball home runs. Two-two delivery, and he got it. But Arezzi has got six strikeouts in the ball game. He retires the side in order. Good for you and good for your arteries. Friday against the Blue Jays. Masson's coverage of opening day festivities will begin at 2 p.m. with those extra presented by Southwest, followed by our game coverage at 3 on Masson and WJZ. All the access you need right here on Masson. Coming up next, Rich Griffin, who covers the Jays, said in the sun, it's become clear that six year GM Alex Anthropoulos has altered his philosophy in regard to the Jays, saving none of the bullets. Age means nothing. It's all about accelerating the talent on hand and living day to day. They are a club looking to win right now. The Jays organization has gone from a cautious plodding development system to one that sees talent and is willing to have it develop at the major league level. Six rookies. Yep. Talented rookies. Here is Jennings. Get into a double play and a big one on uh, review. And let's also not avoid the obvious. There's probably going to be a new president of the Jays next year. He may bring along a new GM. Anthropolis might not be there. So if you think maybe this is going to be your last year, you're damn right you're going to try and win right now. 0 oh, 2 count on Jennings. And the pitch is taken outside. And a one ball, two strikes. Well, you know, again, you, I did two of my three games in spring training with the Blue Jays. They are doing all your work. They, they have some pretty good young talent. Mm. And. Uh, they had some holes to fill. Ooh, um, yeah. well, got him yeah. tied up on that one. Yeah, well, sometimes uh, you, the pitcher's best friend can be a backup slider. It's supposed to be down and away, and, and, and this is where Jennings thinks it's going, and it just keeps spinning and then commits himself and can't hold up. You get away with a mistake, you, you hang him high. That's this might have been Clint Eastwood's favorite pitch. You know, the, the backup slider. It's going to hang him high up and in, you know? Don't hang him out over the plate. <laughs> the spaghetti western so it makes me hungry. <laughs> Don't worry, plenty of food on the plane. <laughs> Is there ever? <laughs> Kevin Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer grounded out his first time up, one down, nobody on. Scoreless here in the fourth inning. Pitch will be taken away. Pitch count rising, 64. Thrown now by Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah, we put a big dent into it with 32 in the first yeah. inning, but again, because Settle of the double in. play, got. Unscathed. 
Ground ball towards first. Get they over there. Cover Get Gonzalez. over Here's there. The scope man. Yep. They got a nice yeah. play. There's Gonzalez got a good break and a good lead taken by Jonathan Scope. PFPs, pitchers fielding practice. Everybody's yelling, get over there. Not Chris Davis because he's diving for it. Scope's right there off his glove. Miguel Gonzalez says, I'll take the out. Chris Kiermeyer came in with a double, a triple, and a home run. Nice to get him out. And how do you do it? Cover, cover the base. He is fast. Yeah, he really is. Miguel beat him there. Sometimes you have to take that direct line when you have a slow plotter. You can kind of maybe go up the baseline a little bit, but direct path, get the ball, and that's the other thing. Scope got it to him so he could catch it and then find the bag. No problem at all. Good lead for the TD. Here's Forsyth, and he'll go to third. Manny Machado knocks it down. Foul territory, the throw, and got him! Manny does it again. Machado in yeah. foul territory. Yeah. They're going to challenge yeah. it here, but yeah. it's fun to watch no matter what the ultimate call is. Well, James Loney came out on the, uh, I thought he was hurt. He came out on the warning track. Not again. Now the yeah. team will, yeah. if the rules followed here, the team stays on the field. Yeah, and Kevin Cash, again, you get up until two outs, you can stay in the dugout, but he was already on the field as the call was being made. And again, Very I mean, close. this is why, yeah, this is why Manny Machado is Manny Machado because to even make this play close, you got to catch it, you got to get up, and then you got to throw a bullet across the diamond, which is all the things he did. Great rain, former shortstop coming up. And then right there, I mean, how do you find? Yeah, so it safe. looked like a tie. Jennings looked out. He's yeah. safe. Yeah, he is safe. So that'll get reversed. That's why you have the replay. Great effort. Kind We've like already had uh, the key play in this ball game so far was in the first inning on the replay on the Jennings ground ball as the bases were loaded. A run would have scored. Jennings was called safe at first base in the attempted double play on review. Jennings was ruled out. They overturned the call. That saved the only run that could have scored so far in this ball game. And now we're going to get a review here and looks like it'll be overturned. Yeah, Alan Dykstra is going to get the hit here in the fourth. So you let's, let's see for that's what the third replay that they've had. Kevin Cash lost the tag at the plate. Mm -hmm. and then uh, last night there was another one, and then this. Dana Demuth is the crew chief. He is on the right. And uh, speaking of that, we want to send along, uh, we hope, for uh, Ed Hickox. Yeah. He took a couple of foul balls in the mass last night. He's not with the crew tonight. Hoping that he is okay. I'm sure it's probably precautionary. But I'm sure there's a, yeah, we... a protocol for the umpires as there yes. are for the players. You would think they would have uh, come up with this pretty quickly because it certainly looked obvious that he was safe.
third base. Now watch his foot. Does he touch the bag? I mean, clearly he's at the bag, but does he touch it before the ball is caught by Chris Davis? See right there, the uh, toe does roll over the bag. So, to your point, as a former lawyer, you, what did you say? It has to be conclusive. Indi yeah, conclusive, indisputable to, to change it yep. or whatever. And yep. apparently that wasn't the case. Yep. I mean, That's why the burden of proof matters. It, it, it has everything to do with what happens on those replays. Ball put up in the air by Manny Machado to center field. He went after the first pitch. Kiermaier is back there. He's got it. And Machado's 0 for 2. One down. Fifth inning. Scoreless ball game and a good one. Flaherty and Lavarnway will be coming up for the uh, Orioles. And credit the guys in New York. I mean, that's why it takes mm -hmm. a little longer. You're looking at every angle. They are. They get all of the angles you see that we have. If there's a feed for the other team, they get that. And Major League Baseball has its own camera, so they have a lot to look at. And it really does help the umpires out because if you're trying to see whether the ball got into the glove versus the foot of the sound, it's hard to do all that. Yeah. And it showed, I mean, the, the foot maybe didn't touch the bag, but it did beat the ball. Yep. Ryan Flaherty will take it up high for a ball. Orioles have just the one hit in the ball game, a double by LaVarnway that came in the third inning. The Rays have only three hits. They have stranded four, three of those in scoring position. Orioles have left two on, one in scoring position. That was LaVarnway who made it to second base. So Teresi's been tough. He's retired the side in order so far in three of the four innings. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and a swing and a miss. Yeah, not a lot of hittable pitches. Maybe back in the uh, the third, he got a cutter up to the barn way who's on deck and he hit the double over Sousa's head and right. Narizzi's delivery yeah. and that's there and he got him. Boys piling him up. That's seven strikeouts. Well, you really don't know what to look for. And then when you get the two strikes, you 176. That's the the batting average last year in the American League with the with two strikes. He had to hit everything and then watch watch, him, watch the the ball right on the corner. Ryan Flaherty thinks it might be off the corner. It wasn't. So, seven Ks, no walks. Here's LeVar who has the Orioles hit the double that came in the third inning. They'll put the shift on against him. And he'll swing a miss on that one. Good power the other way for LeVar who showed it in the first about, which is why the outfield will play him straight up. One way earning the backup catcher's job. 27 years old, out of Burbank, California, where he's born, now lives in Denver, Colorado. And a two strike count. O's fans, always welcoming you back to join the conversation on Twitter. Tag a tweet using hashtag welcome back birds to win Orioles gear from Masson. Be sure to follow at Masson Orioles all season long for more ways to win. Being social with Masson has its reward. 0-2, Ryan Lavarnway, and it easy just yeah. waste one up. <laughs> it really was. And it came out of his windup early. Goes, I don't really know what I want to do. I'm not committed to this bit, so I'll just throw it up and away. And that's not a bad idea. You're still ahead in the count. And again, you you kind of adjust over what the previous bats were, and the last one was a double. Yeah. Went up to protect on that, and a one ball, two strike count continues. I mean, Odorizzi comes over to Tampa, and um, this will be his what third year in their organization. He was part of that James Shields trade. They've gone uh, 11 and three you know, down at their AAA affiliate for the Royals down in Omaha. Two down, nobody on. One, two, deliver it. Barnway will put that one up in the air to left field. It's going back near the warning track, on it near the wall, and hauled in. Jennings right back up against it and a one two three inning again for Rodriguez. It remains zip zip.
Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. And by Navy Federal Credit Union, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for 80 years. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer here at the Trop in St. Petersburg, Florida, and a real good ball game as the Orioles are after the sweep here in this three-game set. Here's one of the Orioles who hopes to be back during the next homestand here for the Orioles. J.J. Hardy, Orioles shortstop, continuing to work out. Non-throwing shoulder has been the problem. Matt Weeders continuing to play toss, but not much more than that. Waiting to see when they think he can step in and take some batting practice. Gonzalez and the pitch to Dykstra, who struck out his first time up, is in their first strike. Yeah, Matt had a uh, interesting uh, comment, what, two days ago when he was throwing down on the field. He said, I'm ahead of schedule, I'm just not ahead of my schedule. <laughs> and a swing and a miss, Gonzalez. Good turnover pitch right there, 0 oh, and a 2. Rivera in the 9 spot, then to Jesus, top of the order. Two Orioles on the DL, of the four who were there to start the season. And the 0-2 pitch, and that'll miss bouncing off the play one and two. You do understand that that ruling on the Manny Machado play was as we thought, as it was inconclusive as to whether or not the runner had touched first base, even though he got there ahead of the ball. That's why the out call was confirmed. One-two delivery, and that will be taken. And Dykstrip with a two-ball, two-strike count. So Manny with another outstanding. Patented play in foul territory over there at third base on that throw. Two and two. And that one will slice inside a little bit, full count. Yeah, Alan Dykstra made an interesting uh, comment as you come through the minor leagues. You know, you're always trying to get into a rhythm, and he said at the end of the day, you still, you just got to have to understand your swing. You got to know what works, and then you have to prove it up here. Three two yeah. delivery, and he draws the walk. So you get so ahead of him and just three. put him away, yeah. And that is a leadoff walk here in the fifth inning. On Sunday, bring the family to Oriole Park. Celebrate kids opening day as the birds take on the Jays at 135. First 7,500 kids, 14 and under, get the Orioles braided necklaces. All the kids can run the bases after the game. Several lucky kids are going to get to participate in some unique experiences like helping to deliver the lineup card to the plate, taking a turn on the field for the national anthem with players. It's kids opening day Sunday. For tickets, 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. It's supposed to be bright and sunny, a little bit cooler from opening day. Rivera up the middle. They were squeezing him there. Scope one. Look at this turn. And they got him. Yeah. A slow runner, but nevertheless, pretty tough play around second base. It's not really a dead shift, but uh, what happens is you shift up the middle. Otherwise, Scope doesn't get to this ball. It's hit off the end of the bat, little slider away. It's hit off the end of the bat, but right over the rubber. And right here, I mean, a little 180. Don't know where the runner is. You know, Dykstra's a big guy at 6'5. Weighs about 240, so he doesn't get down there that quickly, and Ryan able to turn it. So one pitch, two outs after the leadoff walk. Huge. Defense continuing to shine for the Orioles. Keystone combination outstanding on that one. Clarity and Jonathan Scope. Scope's having himself quite a ball game. So two down and nobody on. That takes care of that leadoff walk. DeJesus with a base hit, and he has flied out. Top of the order for the Rays. David DeJesus, outfield moves in a couple of steps on him, even though he's got some power. And that one is late in there on speed delivery for a strike one and one. Yeah, you know, as a veteran hitter, he would love to, to get Miguel get behind him and get a fastball inside half and turn on it. So that's why you saw the curveball. You can see the splitters. Now they're going to, looks like they're going to come in, but come in hard. And they and do. Did. Yeah. Foul that one right straight back for a one ball two strike. See, and that's a hittable fastball unless you make your pitch. And then again if you're making your pitch that means. You're pitching you're not throwing. And he got it in just enough even though he had a big swing. He couldn't quite get a bad head to it. So 32 pitches in the first inning and here he is uh, with two outs in the fifth with only 75. So much more efficient. Kind of what we're used to seeing. Here's the one two delivery by Gonzalez and mm. he thought he had it. Does not get the call. Count will go to two and a two. He faced Tampa Bay three times as a starter last year. One two non decisioned in the other. Orioles were two and one in those starts. Against the Rays with Miguel starting. Ground ball towards first. Davis will back up. Gonzalez will cover. 
And they get the out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Only three faced this inning, and that was true in the fourth as well. It remains. Zip, zip. Not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. Toronto will be coming to Baltimore. The Orioles will try and play the same kind of D that they've been playing under Buck Showalter and have here. Cool ball on the left, Bobby Dickerson on the right, third base coach, and in the middle, Ryan Flaherty. Talking about probably both hitting and D in that conversation. That are easy. We'll go to work here. And the pitch off speed at 67. Yeah, Jonathan really. Scope hit by a pitch first time up. First slow curveball he's thrown all night. 0 1 count. Scope will take a heater upstairs. Toronto is beating the Yankees tonight 2 to nothing so far. As Dickey has gone five innings without giving up a run on a couple of hits. Ball, a towery pop up to the white ceiling. Second base. And that's where it will be caught by Forsyth. Scope retired, one away in the sixth. A really good job, and only the one hit, the, the double over the head of the right fielder Souza by LeVarnway, but really good job of uh, the splitter going down. Saw the curve ball pitching up out of the zone, just enough cutters to keep you off balance. And pretty much doing what he did the second half of last year. I mean, he started out last year two and six, and then went nine and seven, giving up three and a half runs a game. So it's kind of what you expect when you face Tampa Bay. Good pitching. Looking for the bunt, charging in was Longoria. Alejandro Diaz showed it, pulled it back for a ball. Now in the sixth inning, got to think about trying to manufacture a run. Both these teams do. These pitchers shutting them down. Orioles one hit, three for the Rays. 1 0 delivery taken, and it is in there for a strike 1 and 1. Yeah, it's almost like he could walk up and place the ball in the outside corner. His, I mean, pinpoint control tonight. Very then, relaxed yeah, delivery. Yeah. Huh? And then when you go out there to cover it, he's got the splitter that looks like it, and it just goes straight down. The 1 1 to as a fastball yeah. is there for a strike. And it, it's not, you know, it's got good movement, it's got good location. So what we've seen 93 once or twice, but you don't have to throw in the mid 90s if you can make your pitches with movement in life. One and two. They as a leadoff batter. They'll check it down to third base. Did not go around. Thought of Yeah. Two and two. A lot of differentiation on that fastball compared to that changeup. A lot to think about at the plate. Here's the 2 2 delivery shift on in the infield, and that'll be fouled off the other way. So the Aza will hold it 2 2. I mean, Jake Odorizzi has a, one of those classic wind up, uh, what about 6 3, 195. Very simple. Hands break over the knees, kind of the way we were taught in the Oriole organization. Watch his head. Watch his front shoulder and his head. Look how quiet it is. 
2 2 delivery on the way and another one foul back. So Deaza continues doing what he's done in all three of these ball games, and that's have some long at bats. He's fouled off some pretty good pitchers, pitches from the Rays pitchers here in this series. He has struck out flyed out in this one. A couple of hits, 11 at bats, first three games. 2 2 delivery again and just missed. 3 and 2. Full count delivery. There's a he's going to get a base hit into right field. Another strong at bat. So the Orioles get a man on here in the sixth inning with one down. See if they move in the base pass. Well, when you visit Oriole Park this season, you'll find a few changes in the entry process, according to them. It'll be policy at ballpark gates. Now at metal detectors, fans will be asked to remove their keys, mobile phones, wallets, IDs, and loose change won't need to be removed. Gates will open on opening day at noon. That's Friday. And beginning with Saturday's game, all gates will open two hours prior to first pitch in an effort to accommodate what may be a little slightly longer entry time. Go to Orioles.com slash guide if you want to review the security procedures. Three o'clock game, though, for the opener Friday, noontime for the gates. Ground ball, that's going to go into the shift. Short to second to first, and Pierce hits into the double play. No runs, one hit. No errors and nobody left on base. Pitcher's duel continues. No score. The Orioles rose to the occasion. Gonzalez had a tough first inning. He's picked up three strikeouts. He needed help from his D, though, to get a double play from Jennings to end the first. Took him out of it as they had the bases loaded, but could not convert. Rivera hit into a double play in the fifth inning, and for Gonzalez, has settled it in. Just two hits for the Orioles, three for the Rays. But he's committed an error, and we've seen some fine defensive play as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It will be Souza Cabrera and Longoria due up for the Rays. A base hit and a walk for the right fielder. Well, the middle of the order again. It just fouled yeah. a couple of feet outside of third. Yeah, fortunate there, a little slider that stayed up. Seventy nine pitches thrown by show Walter wants to use the bullpen if he has a chance to in this game but the pitchers who haven't pitched in this series with the day off tomorrow swing and a miss movement away. Oh and two. Well you're really seeing why Miguel Gonzalez uh, can get people out and uh, to me he's vastly underrated you know, at the lowest ERA of any of the Orioles starters last year. O2 pitch check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Home plate umpire makes the call. Paul Nort with the call. One down. Yeah, Mike Estabrook down at first, kind of nodding. And little splitter that he tried to hold up on him. He really did hold the bat. So how far did it go? Yeah, it's out in front of home plate. 
and this is what they're looking at. And even the home plate umpire saw mm -hmm. the bat head out far enough to call it a strike. Four strikeouts for Gonzalez. Leadoff man has been on only once in six innings. The walk in the fifth, but a double play by the next batter eliminated that. One down here, pitch in there for a strike. Cabrera. He has singled and popped out. Now three for seven in his career against Gonzalez. Infield shifts around, playing him to pull a little bit more. Scope took like three steps towards the foul line at second base. Another one in there for a strike. Coming right at him on two. Yeah, the league average, uh, uh, with batting average and balls in play is about 300 every year. Miguel has been 261, 261, 273. So that's why people think it's been an aberration these three years. And he keeps getting people out, though. So after a while, maybe it's Comes not an aberration. Norm, yeah. 0 2 delivery on the way. That'll go to first base. Davis says, I got it. Wasn't kidding. You know, and then you, you're not a lot of strikeouts, and then you a couple in the home runs, and then they penalize you for having they they penalize you for having a good defense behind you. Look at the lowest yeah, yeah. road ERA by a starter starting with July 1 to the end of last year. Yeah. Another luck factor. Right. Pretty good company he right can, there. He can make some pitches, and he's done that tonight. I mean, he got he made one pitch to get out of the first inning after he struggled, 32 in all. But they haven't gotten him any runs, and Odorizzi certainly doesn't look like he wants to give any up. Here is Longoria. He'll be going for the long ball here. It's a scoreless ball game. He's drawn a walk, and he has struck out. So Longoria in this series, couple of hits, seven at bats. The one of those being a solo home run for the Rays. Orioles with four homers, Rays three in the series. Pitch will be taken. Well, this is my point about uh, who do you want to pitch to? Right? Now Jennings has had hit four home runs off him, but uh, you just cannot be up in the zone against Longoria. It'll be one to nothing. That's a strike yeah. in the outside corner. And if you don't make the pitch, you let him go down to first. Gonzalez three walks, four strikeouts. At Arizzi, no walks and seven strikeouts. The Rays started. Two one delivery, fouled it off his leg. And a two ball two strike count from Gonzalez. Again back home for the Orioles starting on Friday. The home opener Bud Norris Mark Burley. And the night game Saturday. Baldo Jimenez Aaron Sanchez. Sunday afternoon Chris Tillman Drew Hutchinson the schedule starters in that first series. Yeah, Bud Norris coming off 15 wins and Burley doing what he always does which is pitch 200 innings. And it's down the line. Curving and foul. Yeah, Mark Burley now has won what ten or more games. Right, I think he started out last year nine and one, but uh, ten or more games, fourteen consecutive years. Never ever at age thirty six been on the disabled list. Burley pitches. Get to your seats when the game starts. Well, that's yeah. He's in a hurry. Yeah, don't come show up late for opening day. <laughs> Here's Evan Longoria. <laughs> Fouling another one back, and it stays at two balls and two strikes. Boy, what a battle this has been. Base runners, not many. Four left on for Tampa Bay, three in scoring position. The only base runners the Orioles have had came in the third inning on a double, and then Jonathan Scope hit by a pitch. That's it. Four base runners left on. And that one bounces, so it's full three and two. Yeah, you could see LeBarnway, uh, Ryan just saying, okay. Pat at the ground, splitter, make sure it's down. Pitch before was probably more up in the zone than he wanted. There's another, looks like it's going to be another split finger fastball. And the 3 2 delivery on the way, and he walked him. So that'll be the second time Longoria's drawn the free pass. Now you go back four or five years ago before hamstring and problems, he did, he stole 15 bases one year. Last year, five for five. Number eight, Mattis, Kennedy. one of the Oriole pitchers we were talking about, but Showalter wanted to get into this ball game if he had a chance. Well, pitch count at 92. Yeah, yeah, and you got Kiermeyer on deck, so he's already doubled, homered, tripled in this series. So if Jennings would happen to get on, you'd probably see the lefty lefty matchup. So they'll talk about the situation. Longoria on. Jennings up was 0 for 2, but as we've said, has hit Gonzalez 
tough. Six for 25 with four home runs lifetime. And then Kiermeyer, the left hander, with Brian Mattis getting ready in the bullpen. May have been more right there about giving yeah. Mattis a chance to get a couple of extra tosses mm -hmm. in to make sure he's ready. Well, Dave Wallace knows exactly what uh, Miguel Gonzalez uh, did. He either going to make perfect pitch to Longoria or walk him and then take your chances with Jennings. Jennings carries a seven game hit streak against the Orioles going back to last year. He's had nine hits in his last 29 at bats against the Orioles. Two down, runner on at first base. Mm -hmm. And the pitch is up high for a ball. Yeah, they really give him the left field line. I mean, Daza over in the, the, the alley, so any ball down the line, it's going to be tough to, to throw out Longoria. And then uh, you can see Snyder. Adam Jones, as you talked about, Gary, playing pretty shallow in center. 1 0 count really squeeze the outfield of the middle. That one is going to be there for a strike. Yeah, all, one, Desmond yeah. Jennings. You know, all the work you do, your sides, all spring training is can you make quality pitches when you need to make them? And this is certainly one of those times. You get a pretty good idea when a guy's hit four home runs off you what he likes. And you try to stay out of that zone. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and the pitch will be outside. Being careful with him here in a two ball one strike count scoreless in the sixth. First base two down Longoria. And Desmond Jennings. Trying to find the extra base hit that might get Longoria around. The long hold and the two one delivery and that will be away. And the count goes to three and one. Yeah, see what happens with Miguel and it could be fatigue uh, you know with the pitches at 96. It's just watch his front shoulder if his shoulder doesn't get closed. It's a ball out of his hand, and that's the problems he had early on. Certainly made that adjustment, and right now, of course, he wants to stay away, but he'd like to stay down in the zone. Just watch the front shoulder. Does it ever get closed? Not Three really. One delivery yeah. is there, and got away with it there. Hanging slider, 97 pitches. pitches. Three ball, two strike count, two down. Longoria, not fleet of foot, but has the advantage, of course, of two down. Anything hit will be off. And on the three two count we'll get the break on the delivery. Runner takes off and the pitch is oh, inside he missed for it. ball. So the fifth walk surrendered two in a row here in the sixth and that'll be it. For Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah almost got him on the backup uh, breaking ball. Must have gone around the inside corner. So the Orioles starter is out of there. Gonzalez will be responsible for the two base runners who are on. Our ATT called to the bullpen. ATT proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. ATT mobilizing your world. Settled it in. Probably uh, as good as he's pitched all uh, spring and coming into the the season. So really made a lot of big pitches. Really goes back to the first inning right there. The uh, the check swing. Jennings goes down. 
of four walks, four strikeouts, but a double play with the bases loaded. So he will leave. No run support, five walks, the five strikeouts. And uh, now all of a sudden uh, you bring Madison and they pinch hit Brandon Geyer. Brandon Geyer will be at the plate, two on and uh, two down. And Geyer lines it. It is a foul ball as he goes after the first pitch. Well, what Brian Mattis does, he struggles against righties. That's why you get the matchup. Uh, again, uh, they they uh, they send up the right-hander instead of the left-handers. Gets lefties out. And the other thing he does so well, you can see the strikeouts more than innings pitches. Inherited runners. Only 20% of uh, the inherited runners last year scored against him. Done a great job of that. Geyer is two for five with a home run. Lifetime off Brian Mattis. So that's why he's up there. So Geyer with two down, the walk to Longoria and Jennings both coming with two away. They are the base runners. Scoreless game, sixth inning. One ball, one strike count. Brian Mattis delivers overhand all the way to the backstop. Runners take off. While pitch, they'll move up. That's a ball that probably should have been blocked. Obviously, it's going to be a wild pitch because it bounced, but that's a ball that you just have to smother. And then again, he gets cut him really good down. I mean, great angle there. The ball bouncing and out in front of home plate, but never really got down. So he couldn't block it. A little bit late. Certainly a tough play. So that sets up two runs if Geyer could pick up a base hit. 2-1 delivery on the way. He yanks that one way up into the light stands. And into foul territory. Well, the whole spring for Brian Mattis the last two years was to let him start early. They did it last year. They did it this year to be able to reestablish his arm side of the plate. And that's to be able to get right handers out. Change ups, fastballs, run it away. When he's able to do that, he's able to get in on the right handers. His first appearance of the season. 2 2 count. Runners off second and third. Off speed pitch will miss outside. And the count goes to three and two. What a great uh, attempt to try to backdoor his breaking ball. Nobody up in the bullpen for the Orioles. Forsyth is the on deck batter. Three and two. Ryan Mattis walks them and they are loaded. So three consecutive walks here in the sixth. Two by Gonzalez, one by Brian Mattis loads the bases with two outs. Well, as you mentioned, nobody up behind. You're not going to match up. Forsyth, at least career wise, 270 hitter with 10 home runs against left handers and kind of changed last night's game uh, when he hit the two run home run off of Wei and Chen. Made it six to three to six to five. So you can see those pretty nice numbers on a lot of at bats. Six for 19. Two for four off Mattis with a home run for Foresight. So the only chance really since the first inning that the Rays have had a real good scoring opportunity. None better than this as they get a base runner over to third. Bases loaded, two down, 1 0 delivery on the way, and that'll be in the outside corner for a strike. Had a runner to third in the first inning, stranded, and none since. Ryan Mattis, chance to show stuff against right handed hitters. Well, a nice little 1 0 change up on the outside corner. 1 1 delivery on the way, reached, fouled it back. And there's another one. Well, the There's rule five, Garcia. yeah, yeah. Jason Garcia out of the Red Sox organization, uh, really pitched well for a young pitcher right out of a ball. Rule five is you take him for fifty thousand, and he has to stay on the roster all year long, or get offered back to the Red Sox. The Orioles were not going to do that. No. They like his arm. Yep. So, Ryan Mattis, yeah. one and two, two down. Well, he certainly, with the changeup, got back into the count, and set up the inside corner, and again with the. With the one and two count, you have a couple of pitches to make your pitches. And when he started, boy, he could get in on right handers with the best of them. One, two delivery, and that one will miss two and two. He's had good numbers against the Rays in his career. Brian Mattis with a five and two record against them. He's pitched a lot of innings when he was doing some starting. There is Jeff Bellavo for the Rays. 
2 2 2 away. Sacks full, no score. Sixth inning. Mattis delivers, and that breaking ball takes the count full with nowhere to put him. Yeah, and that does create a dilemma. I mean, you got to throw a strike. And to do that, does that mean you throw it for a little more of the, uh, the plate? And we saw what happens when you leave one in the middle of the plate. That Forsyth can do. I mean, he blasted one to deep left center. Two run shot last night. Longoria, Jennings, Geyer, the base runners. 3 2. Runners go outside, and there's the first run of the ball game. Four walks in a row here in the sixth inning. Two by Gonzalez, two by Mannis, RBI, Forsyth, and a 1 0 game. Yeah, just came out of his windup a little bit too early, and the ball runs about two feet off the plate. And you can see, yeah, I mean, look where it is, right in the middle of the left-handed batter's box. Now, with the left-hander due up, Dykstra in his major league debut, he'll be pinch hit for, and Beckham will come on as the pinch hitter. And you saw Buck Showalter sitting watching. He's going to let Mattis try and get out of this. With two down, bases remain loaded, and a one-nothing lead on the RBI by Forsyth is third of the series. Pitch will miss down low for a ball. And Gonzalez charged with that run on the walk to Longoria, who has scored. Jennings, Geyer, Forsyth, now the base runners. 1 0 delivery by Mattis. That'll be outside. Yeah, here comes Dave Wallace. It, and he's sprinting out there. I mean, sometimes you got to trust your stuff. I mean, we're not seeing 91 to 93, which is a typical fastball. I, I didn't see that in spring training. Much stronger, much, at least the conditioning part of it. But nothing happens unless you throw it over. And that might have been the message right there. He could understand Gonzalez Longoria can hit a home run Jennings hit four home runs off you so maybe into the almost 100 pitch you're going to be a little bit tired but again part of relieving is the ability to throw strikes and Brian hasn't been able to do it to this point. Two and two. Two all -oh, rather two down. Bases loaded here got to throw a strike and he does catches the outside corner with a two ball one strike count on Beckham. Beckham made the. Starts here in this series, playing at second base. In the ball game last night, and gets a chance here as a pinch hitter. Two one runners off all three, swing and a miss on a big cut to undo. Yeah, a little bit of movement on that one. He swings right through it. See where the glove is. Ball pretty much in the middle of the plate, but with nice life. Little four seam fastball. Set up outside. 2 2 delivery. Fouled away. And we'll do it again. Two balls and two strikes. An inning started. Souza struck out, and then Cabrera in the ground ball out. Two down with Gonzalez pitching. Longoria just didn't want to give in. Pitched around him and walked him. Then Jennings came up and drew the walk. That took Gonzalez out of the game. Geyer pinch hit. He drew a walk. Forsyth. He drew a walk. Now the bases remain loaded here. Two down. Two two pitch to him. Swung on and missed. So Brian Mattis gets a strikeout, but a bases loaded walk has scored the first run of the game. Rays lead.
things uh, with the double play. Orioles will do the replay, and then Manny Ru Ru Machado with a great play. The throw it looks like Forsythe beats it, but maybe the foot doesn't touch the bag, and the again goes in the Orioles' favor. And then right here, Rivera up the middle, scope to Flaherty, little 180. They turn to double play. So Gonzalez pitches well, but the, the couple of walks and then two walks by Mattis, Odorizzi to at least to this point is is out bits him. He's been very, very good tonight. Those are your Geico game highlights. 15 minutes to save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free great quote. So quote. Travis Snyder is coming up. It'll be Geyer going to left field with the changes after the pinch hitters came in. Jennings moves to center. Beckham is going to stay in the ball game play at second base. Travis Snyder. He has struck out flied out foul back. Forsyth has gone from second to first base with Dykstra out of the ball game. So you've got Geyer Jennings Sousa in the outfield Longoria Cabrera Beckham and Forsyth on the infield. Yeah a lot of guys you can plug in if you're Kevin Cash. You know Beckham can play shortstop. He can play second. The same with uh, Cabrera. Played second base for the Nationals when he got traded over there last year. Up high, one ball, two strike count. We're in the seventh inning. Snyder is struck out and flied out. One, three, and zero oh for the Rays. O oh, two and zero oh for the Orioles. Odorizzi hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out seven. Let's held the Orioles down. Foul back. Gonzalez will end up charged with a run on three hits, five and two thirds innings. He walked five and struck out four. Now the Orioles try and battle back here as they trail for the series sweep game. One two delivery and that one is going to be foul back. Now he's maintained his velocity here. I mean that's uh, 91 pitches. Right around 91 maybe a couple of pitches a tick higher early. But the ability to cut the ball and the, the splitter. We've seen what 268 mile per hour curveballs. One two delivery on the way and a chopper. Shortstop. Cabrera. First time the Orioles have trailed here in the first three games of the year. On Friday, celebrate opening day in Birdland. Enjoy the O's Day at Chick fil A. All O's fans who wear Orioles gear or any orange clothing to a participating Baltimore area Chick fil A restaurant from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Will receive a free original chicken sandwich. It will be a special O's Day at Chick fil A each month during the regular season, so don't miss the first one Friday at participating area Chick fil A locations. Here is Adam Jones. He has popped out and grounded out and will take the pitch for his strike. That are easy, 93 pitches thrown so far. Jones. With the 0 for 2, now 8 for 16 and a lifetime home run against Odorizzi. 0 1 delivery, towering fly ball left field. Geyer. Two down. That may be it for Odorizzi. Bullpen's ready. And they're going to make the move right here. Boy, what a game. He has pitched here, trying to prevent the sweep by the Orioles. He certainly has done. His part. And they'll go to the bullpen again. They've gone deep in each of the first two. Our Jiffy Lube pitching change. Time for a little relief. Visit Jiffy Lube for regular oil changes. Jiffy Lube, drive in today.
uh, Feller pitchers on, on uh, to, to his left. Uh, Matt Moore, 118 game, Tommy John surgery. So again, now it's up to the bullpen. He gets them 20 outs, leads with a 1 0 lead. Uh, Bellavo, we saw him the other day, did give up the double to Snyder. And of course, this is a matchup situation. Can you get the lefties out? And uh, he usually has the ability to do that. Did hang a breaking ball. And if you wonder how Chris Davis last year hit lefties, what, 26 home run, nine of them against left handers, 188 batting average. So Bellavo with two down, nobody on. Davis has struck out twice in the ball game. One nothing lead for the Rays. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Bellavo, one hit, no runs against the Orioles in the inning that he worked in the one game here in this first series of the year. Okay. Left handers 146 off him, right handers 271. And he's not a hard thrower, so it's about command. You can see where the glove is, and there's another one pretty much down the middle at 86. That's what he uh, clocked out it on Monday. And then he's got a pretty nice little curveball. Kind of a swerve in between a curveball and a slider. 0 2 count, the Orioles seven strikeouts. What a reason. They've had a number of strikeouts here in this series. Here's the 0 2. And a swing and a foul ball. Orioles bullpen, Brad Brock and uh, Garcia still up. Garcia's been up for more than an inning now. Yeah, he's certainly ready. Chris. <laughs> Chance to make your major league debut. Probably took him about four pitches. Mm -hmm. Davis with the 0 2 count. This has had eight home runs here at the top in his career. Here's the 0 2 delivery. Hello. Another one up, foul back into the screen. Yeah, they're messing around up and away. That's his strength. He can hit home runs, as all the big guys can. It's like they almost flick it. Didn't even look like they hit it well. Chris had a strikeout in the ball game last night. Two here in this one. Set up away, way away. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Got that one in a little close. May have gotten away with it though. Jennings going back in center, and he will make the catch. Seventh inning stretch time in Game Three of this series. Rays have the one nothing lead. Jason Garcia, Major League debut, Jim all the way from Abel. Well, well, kind of brings back a little bit of memories because that's what happened when I was 19. Uh, they just didn't want to give up the arm. You know, he hit 98, he could throw strikes, he got a very simple windup. What, about 50 innings last year at uh, A ball? So, huge jump. Says he was five years in the minors at Orlando Lakes. Florida, born in the Bronx, went to school, Land of Lakes, and drafted right out of high school, 17th round, 2010, by the Red Sox. Kept him in their organization, then acquired 
by the Orioles on the rule five and now here he is with a major league debut game in a one nothing ball game. Bottom half of the seventh inning Brian Mattis worked a third of an inning a strikeout and a walk. And a wild pitch and the pitch will be taken away here's Rene Rivera. Rivera the 0 for 2 tonight the 0 for 10. In the three game set. Bases loaded walk accounting for the only run we've got in the ball game. He'll miss outside with it. Count goes to two and zero. Oh. Need to throw strikes here. These raise hitters are going to make him work. Yeah, trying to hit the outside corner, so bring the glove over, which he just did. Chris Rivera. I mean, it took him a while. I mean, he's what 31 years old. 15 minor league teams. Winter ball in the Dominican. Winter ball in Puerto Rico, and then 121 games in the majors. Garcia had a great. Uh, Great numbers, as you might expect, at A ball. He averaged more than a strikeout an inning. Swing and a miss. Got that one up to 95. And there was some movement. There's not a lot to go wrong with this windup. Mandine's got a hard slider to go with uh, 93 to occasionally in the mid 90s, maybe upper 90s. 2 2 yeah. delivery look out. That'll keep you loose in the batter's box. At 93 up around the chin. Yeah, you're looking to protect. He lets one go. I mean, this is chin music. I don't think it's on purpose, but out of the way. See, two, looked like a two seam fastball, just runs, runs, runs. He split his time in the minors over the years as a starter and reliever. More relief over the last couple of years than starting. 3 2 the count, and the delivery will be swung on off the end of the bat down the line, right field. Snyder coming. Davis back. Davis, nice catch. Chris Davis over the shoulder that time puts it away for the out. Yeah, the uh, the roof. And again, I mean a very very athletic guy. To do it all. Nobody else was going to get there. No. Scope was coming over from second. Snyder from right, but neither close enough. And looking up into the lights and that covering here on the roof. Makes it even tougher. Good play. Top of the order now. This is David DeJesus single, and he has also flied out in the ball game. DeJesus will take the pitch. Ground ball last time out to first base. Orioles play pretty much straight up. Pitch to him is going to be in there for a strike. Garcia. One ball, one strike count. Only 22 years old. And the Rule 5 benefiting someone like Garcia as far as getting to the majors. You don't get here that fast. If you're not a Rule 5 player, and the decision made to hang on, as Jim said, keep him. Well, they said he hit 98. I, I, the game that I did, he was right where he is today. And just remember, he also went three and two, and then threw a great slider with the bases loaded. So, two one in the yeah. air to left field, going to turn around Diazza. Yeah, see that's you know that's just a fastball. I mean, it, it, it seems like it's hittable, but just enough movement, kind of what Odorizzi did all night long. That you think you're on it, and then it runs away from your bat head. So it's not only about velocity. Does the ball have life? Does it have movement? Can you throw it over? Can you keep it out of the middle of the plate? Two down. Major League debut looking for a clean inning here in the seventh. Says it coming up a single a walk and he has struck out. A couple of hits in nine at bats in this series. One nothing lead, raise on top, bases loaded, walk, fifth inning, accounting for the only run. Charge to Gonzalez. Fouls that right straight back. Orioles after the sweep. They swept Tampa Bay last year here at the Trop, the beginning of May. In a three game series. Last time the Orioles started a season with consecutive wins, 2012, and they went 3 0. Oh. Oh, 01. And that one fouled off at the plate. He's yeah. throwing strikes. Yeah, there's a good slider. And if you look at his minor league numbers, I, you know, my first year in A ball, I walked 130 and 129 innings. The next year, ended up in the big leagues. 
because it kind of had to be here. But he's walked throughout his career on what, almost 300 innings in the minors, almost 150. So one every two innings. Well, that's not wild, wild. 0 oh, 2 down low. But it just looks to me it's a very compact uh, wind up. And I mean, he trusts his slider. Seems like at least all all spring he didn't have any problem uh, finding his release point. Two away, one and two. Souza will take the pitch, and that one is going to miss. He certainly showed in spring training a confidence for a young player that times you don't see. There wasn't any hesitation on yeah, his part, and, and, and he, he was kind of backed off because he had a, a hamstring problem, and that got better. And then he got a chance to pitch. Two two delivery again. Back into the screen. Souza trying to jump on that one. Holds the count of two balls and two strikes. See the spring numbers for him? Well, that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the reasons. I mean, you know, they also had Logan Barrett, mm -hmm. uh, another guy that pitched very well. Two ball, two strike delivery. And that'll be outside. So a full count trying to keep it alive for his dribble Cabrera. Who is waiting on deck for the Rays. One run combined five hits for these two teams. Sousa with a 3 2 2 down. Outfield will shade him to right. Sousa does not step out of the box. It was, it was Garcia stepping off the rubber. True to the new rules, he hung in there in the batter's box, and it's inside. So he will draw the walk in the ball game. Seventh walk surrendered by the three Oriole pitchers, five by Gonzalez in the game. Two down, one on. You know, a lot of times, yeah, you you could get, and and for Miguel, it, I don't think he was wild. I just think the scoreboard dictates sometimes that you're real careful. As it turned out, he walked two guys. Maddox came in and walked two, and that's how they got their run. But he wasn't wild, wild. He just was trying to make the perfect pitches in a nothing, nothing game and couldn't do it. It's the most walks he's given up in a ball game in his career. Two away as Drubal Cabrera, a single, has popped out, grounded out. Throw over. Now you got to remember, Souza, for a big guy, 6'4, about 225. 26 steals. I mean, every year in the minors, even when he struggled with a bat, he could steal bases. So this may be a running situation. Trying to get a look at Garcia's move to first base. Souza with a pretty good lead. And he's getting a look at it. A couple of throws made. Lavarnway behind the plate in his career, 14.6% of base stealers. Caught, not a lot of chances at the major league level. And the pitch is going to miss away for a ball. So Garcia trying to get out of this seventh inning, hold the score at 1 nothing. See Souza, three steps. Not going inside mm -hmm. two and zero. Oh. Yeah, and this is when you get in trouble. The, the one thing about Cabrera, one year he had 25, but the last four years 14 or more home runs. So you get a veteran hitter. He's going, you know, he's 93 to 95. That's certainly hittable at this level. And he's going to look for something, and if it's on the inside half, turn on it and try to drive it somewhere. Runner goes. Lavarnway's throw and got him. Those are saying, wait a minute, mm -hmm. and uh, here comes Kevin Cash. Yeah, two outs. That would have been the third out of the inning. And Cash is on his way out, and then you'll look over to the dugout to see whether or not he wants to challenge this call at second base. Dana DeMuth, the crew chief, is the second base umpire, where player, manager, and umpire get to chat, and yes, there will be a challenge. So was he out or not? Well, one, you know, one nothing game. What do you have to lose? If you lose a challenge, uh, like in years past, they don't take it away from you anymore. They really makes a good throw, a great pitch to throw on. You could see him shift, and 
and then just drop it. I think he got him. And it mutes right there. He's from that angle, but they'll look at it from a number of angles and we'll see if it gets changed. Fans get to look at a replay or two on the scoreboard here while they await. Now there's yeah. a slow mo close up. Well, he got the tag on the heel. I don't know right. about the toe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's up. There you go. Good. So good job by Levarnway as the caught stealing. Uh, and says it will end the inning. Rays have a one nothing lead as we go to the eighth. Review as uh, Dana DeMuth, the crew chief, decided to take a look at that after being asked to do so. Yeah, and the Kevin, need for a challenge. Yeah, Kevin Jepson comes in, and uh, we saw him yesterday uh, 15 pitches, a clean inning. You can see what he did for the Angels. It was his best year ever for them. And uh, well, again, hard thrower, big curveball, 30 year old right hander, and you know, they had to give up Matt Joyce to get him, but it, once again, what they do every year it seems like they add another piece of the puzzle in their bullpen and with uh, Jake McGee out it looks like Boxberger is going to be their closer so he'll be their main setup guy and he'll face Manny Machado here in the eighth. He's worked two innings in this series and has given up nothing. Orioles down by one eighth inning and Machado will take it for a strike Manny has grounded out and flied out the Orioles have a double by LeBarnway that came in the third inning a single by Diaz that came in the sixth. The only two hits the Orioles have had. Orioles have not received a free pass in the ball game compared to seven that have been picked up by the Rays. Swing and a miss as he tried to launch one. Pulling away in an inside pitch that time and a two strike count from Jepson. But easy, no runs, two hits, six and two thirds, seven Ks. Bellavo worked a third of an inning with zeros. Now Jepson on in relief. The 2 delivery to him, check swing went around, and he's not even going to bother to take off. He'll walk away, and he's up. Well, he throws 95, but he has a good curveball, and he's, man, he saw three of them. And this is what you want to do. You throw it under the strike zone. You got a guy that is one of the best defensive catchers in the National League. You now have him. He blocks it, makes it look routine. It's like an NHL goalie. Keeps it in front of him. Didn't get into the uh, net. That's one where... Where Manny really needs to run. Mm -hmm. You create another play. I mean, the chances of getting it are nothing, but there was a required play to first base on that if he hadn't walked away from the batter's box, and who knows? Catcher might throw it away, first baseman might drop it. You can create a situation where yeah. the defense has to make one more play, you do it. Yeah, it's, it's just like running a ball out. Yep. Routine ball doesn't become routine. And you know, obviously there's frustration that will probably be addressed. Yes. Ryan Flaherty, two K's in the ball game. 
One for nine in the series. Yeah, another changeup. So the one thing about Kevin Jepson, this is his eighth year, and he knows how to pitch. Yeah, he can power, power right the ball right by you, but he's got a changeup. He's got a curveball, so he threw the curveballs to Machado. Flaherty, a better fastball hitter, he starts him off with two changeups. He hasn't thrown a ball yet. 0-2. Oh, Flaherty will take that, the heater, and, and that ball's right down the, the middle. And no. Paul Nauer just misses it. I mean, Rivera sitting away in the ball. I mean, I mean, that ball is pretty much the inside third of the plate, right in front of the eyes of the umpire. So the Orioles get, at least in my estimation, a break. Flaherty 0 for 3 off Jepson. One ball, two strike delivery on the way, and he'll get him on that one. So a couple of strikeouts, two down here in the eighth. Yeah, this is pretty crisp stuff. And again, you had to give up Matt Joyce, and because of the Josh Hamilton, talked about it last night, he'll get to play with the Angels. And I mean, those are three quality pitches, and the Orioles have seen all of them. And then he just Blazes it right by him on the outside corner. Ryan LeBarnway, a double, and he has flied out. Oriole catcher, we're in the ball game tonight. And LeBarnway will have the infield shift put on against him. He's got some power. Yeah, he just missed a home run. I mean, uh, Odorizzi did not leave many balls up unless when he, he wanted to. He skied one right to the warning track. Tried to launch that one, and will follow it right straight back. Jepson at 30 years old, veteran pitcher. Kind of ironic, the uh, last season, the runs he gave up. 19 runs he allowed, 16 came from two teams Seattle and Texas. They're the only two teams who could score against him. And Texas was, uh, because of all the injuries, one yeah. of the youngest teams. And the Mariners, I don't know where he did it, but, but they, did get, they did get Cano. But if you're pitching up there, that's that's a pitcher's park. The Angels, where they play, is a pitcher's park at night. The daytime changes a little bit. 0 oh, 2 count, two down. Fans make it some noise here with their ball club up 1 0 in the eighth inning. LeVarnway will wait on the 0 2 and a timeout taken. Ooh. Stumble there as he was coming around, ready to throw. One blade umpire, Paul Nord, had granted him the timeout. Brock still up in the bullpen. He'll be coming on to pitch. And the 0-2 delivery. That'll miss down low. One ball, two strike count from Gibson. Chance to strike the side out. So a one run ball game last night, 6 5, the Orioles winning it. Now another one run ball game. At this moment, the Orioles losing it, 1 0. What a reason the starter for the Rays, the reason. And that's going to miss. 2 2. This is what the Rays will do to teams again this year. Pitching is always what they live and die with. And while they've got four starters out, they've still got class bullpen and a decent starting rotation. Yeah, well, they'll get their guy back. I mean, yeah. just take longer than they expected. And you know, McGee's going to come back. He had bone chips taken out. Two, two miss, three, two. So Levonre refusing to chase here after he fell behind in the count. Three balls, two strikes, two down, nobody on. Jonathan Scope do up next if Lamarway can keep the inning going. I mean, you'll probably get a pinch runner if he does get on in a one nothing game. Orioles haven't had a runner left on since the third inning when they left the only two they've left on in the game. 3 2 delivery, foul back. Since the third and the double by LeBarnway, Jonathan Scope was hit by a pitch the next batter. The only other base runner the Orioles have had since that third. Was the single picked up by Deaza in the sixth, and he ended up being doubled up. Three two delivery on the way, and again, fought back. Conway refusing to. 
give in, creating at least an eight pitch at bat here. And Rivera is going to go out and talk to Jepson now about what they want to throw here. Well, you go back and uh, you know Rivera's. You try to pay attention to the bullpen. You should. That should be your job. But again, the, the the double was a ball up and away, and that's where that fastball was. So Rivera goes out. Okay, what do we want to do? Where do we want to go? As you said, uh, Lavarnway didn't hit any home runs last year because he hit three of them because of the hand injury. But he does have some power. Three and two. And Lavarnway another one. He keeps rattling off these pitches that are pretty well located by Gibson. Can't put them in play, but we'll keep the at bat going. Rare there on the right. We'll see whether or not he'll make starts in the uh, series at home as the Orioles open up Friday. Delman Young. He'll be in the lineup. This foot shoulder will shuffle. 3 2 delivery in the dirt. He drew the walk. Boy, here in that one. So LeBarnway gets a two out walk here in the eighth inning. That is the first walk surrendered by the three raised pitchers in the game. Now, Jonathan Scope. Hit by a pitch and he has popped out. Infield will shift on him, leaving the entire right side open. There are two down. Potential tying run on at first in the eighth. And Scope will take the pitch for a strike. And they don't pinch run because they have such a short bench. Yeah, that Bucholo was talking about that, how he really wants to get that taken care of. Said we do what we have to do, but this short bench, and here's one of the occasions really limits what he can do with the extra pitchers being carried. Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way in the dirt. Good stop made by Rivera. 1 1. Joseph, the backup catcher, you got to keep available. Delman Young. And we showed you Cabrera, Herbert Cabrera. That's it. One and one, two down. Upfield playing it deep, a little bit over to right. Pitch will be away. Two ball, one strike count. I don't know if Lavarnway intentionally, during his at bat, when he was down two strikes, stepped out just as Jepson was getting ready to deliver. But Jepson hasn't been the same mm -hmm. since. It's a veteran move if he did. Two ball, one strike delivery on the way. And Ooh. that one's going to miss. Yeah, he says no, but you know, those are very borderline pitches. If you're pitching, you'll want them. And of course, Jonathan says, I'll take that. Now I get, I'm not sure it's going to make a whole lot of difference because you can't give in in this situation, but. This is a curveball, and again, you have at least the second best behind Posey is bringing balls or into the strike zone in the National League last year, and that's Rivera. Three-one delivery is there, and they just challenge with heat on that. Three balls, two strikes, two down. So Lavardway gets the advantage here, of being able to take off. Yeah, one of those little nuances of the game, it does make a difference. So if you do hit one up the gap, even though you have catcher speed, it might make a difference. Play behind the runner. Foresight that first base. Backing up behind LeBarnway. Here's the 3 2 delivery and a swing and a miss strikes the side out. So Jepson gets it done. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning race, protecting a one nothing lead.
Yeah, Brian Mattis comes in. He walks Brandon uh, Brandon Geyer to load him up, and then Forsythe hit homered uh, last night off uh, way in channel left hander. So again, you get to the count right here, a little curveball, trying to get back in, and then runs the ball. I mean, really uh, about a foot and a half outside, just opened up a little bit too quickly, and then we come up with a big strikeout. But that's how the one run, the, the only run of this game for the Rays scored. Brad Brock on to do the pitching for the Orioles. Garcia an inning and one walk. So Brad Brock, those are the numbers. Uh, came over from the Padres up and down uh, the last two years for them. Really had a marvelous year. Up and down for the Orioles last year. And then uh, after May uh, with the Orioles for good. Didn't really matter if you're right handed or left handed. Fastball slider power changeup. He will work to the middle of the order. As Drupal Cabrera. Takes the pitch for a strike. Cabrera's had a base hit, one for three in the ball game. Couple of hits, eleven at bats in the series. Longoria and then Jennings will be due up for the Rays. We're in the bottom of the eighth, one nothing. Three hits for the Rays, two for the Orioles. Up high with that, one ball and one strike. Really tight game as the Orioles battle here before getting the day off tomorrow. Heading home for the Friday opener at three against Toronto. And a swing and a miss, pulling the arms back in a little bit. Wesley Wright. Yeah, a local over. kid getting uh, loose. I don't know if he'll come in the game. This could just be because they're really most of their lefties are gone. All right handed hitters in the lineup and they're trying to get some throwing in. Swing and a miss. Had no chance on that one. Yeah, nice breaking ball. Oh, he's got so many options to get you out. Running fastball. This is going to be a slider. As dribble the very I think it's going to maybe uh, stay up out over the plate and just swoops down and in and then the change up that goes down and away from the lefties down and into the right handers. One down Evan Longoria walks scored in the sixth inning. He's the one who came around. He's had two walks and a strikeout in the ball game. Chases one on a ball tailing away from him and a no one count. Well a lesson to be learned if you're one of the big boppers that. And this is, I mean, he, Miguel Gonzalez pitched him very carefully. He took the walk, and it turned out to be the go ahead run to this point. You'd like to hit home runs in a nothing nothing game, but sometimes they're going to pitch around you. Take it. They walked Jennings, walked Geyer, and walked Forsythe. And that's how they got their run. Strike on the outside corner. A little delayed call that Longoria disagrees with. Boxberger in the bullpen. One and two. And Longoria lifts that one. That's going to be into the corner. Longoria will make the turn. Deanza coming over to get it. He will go into second base. He's got a double, his third hit of the series. And it comes with one away in the eighth inning, giving the Rays a chance for what could be a very big second run. They get the slider up. You can see it's supposed to be down and away. That's where Laverne way, and he just stays behind it, hooks it down into the corner. Very hittable breaking ball that he doesn't miss. Desmond Jennings with one down. With the RBI chance against Brock. Jennings one for three off the Oriole reliever in his career. One away, good secondary lead at second, and the pitch is strike in the outside corner. Well, you know the drill if you're sitting at home. It's basically they want to do what the Orioles want to do when they have the lead, add some more runs. First extra base hit the Rays have had three singles and a double in the dirt, stopped by LeBarnway. One one delivery to him late. Trying to hold up on that. Got out guessed on that 92 mile an hour pitch, and it goes to one and two on Desmond Jennings. Jennings, a big double play in the first inning on a review. When the Rays would have scored a run on the original call, review 
overturned the call at first, ended up double play, no run score, down the line, punch shot, foul ball. Well, just protecting. Must have done a lot of that in the spring, hitting 435. One of the best spring yeah. numbers in all of Major League Baseball spring training camps. Well, what Kevin Cash, uh, who comes over as a new skipper, five year deal, said, that, you know, we just sometimes when you lead off, which is primarily where we've seen him, maybe you try to do more than you really need to do. So you move him down the lineup, maybe he relaxes. Just kind of reacts instead of thinking too much. One two pitch came inside on him. Just enough to stay alive at the plate. Stays at one and two. We've seen that time and time and again in the series that the Rays have done a nice job of two strikes of cutting down their swings. Because that was 93 down and in, good life, and he was able to get another pitch to hit here. One two count. Longoria, the lead at second base. That one's up the middle. That's a base hit. Jones charging. Here comes Longoria being way thumb by Montoya. Jones's throw cut off, throw to second base is there, and they will record the out at second, but it'll be an RBI base hit for Jennings. Longoria scores and a 2 0 raised lead. Well, there it is again. I mean, it was a good slider. He just kind of stayed back. Watch him throw his bat head at it. I mean, he just flicked it. Brock can't field his position, and then Adam Jones doesn't make a good throw. Kind of got it caught in his glove, and this is a heads up play here because. Not like he's running him way out of the end. If he gets, if you cut the ball off, you know uh, that you're going to get the run scored, and that's the second run of the game. Gives him a two nothing lead going into the top of the ninth. So Wesley Wright will come on in relief for the Orioles as the Rays add their second run. Highlights, live look ins, replays, and a whole lot more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Wesley Wright. Well, 30 year old left hander uh, actually lives about 20 minutes from here now, so he comes in. You can see 58 games. That lefties and righties out pretty well. And there's one a nice back to the yeah. mound. Wright's got it, and his debut will be one pitch, and that'll do it. A run in, two hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. The Orioles have got to have two to keep this ball game going. We go to the ninth.
Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. By DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free and win real money. And by PNC. For the achiever in you. Ninth inning. Two nothing. Rays. Well, so Brad Boxberger uh, comes on uh, two saves last year. This will at least be his attempt at first time here. We saw him yesterday. Came in, struck out one. You know, last year, 104 strikeouts in what, 64 and two thirds innings. Struck out 42 percent of the batters he faced, which is the highest percentage ever in the history of baseball of batters struck out by a right-handed reliever. Great change up, 80 miles per hour, and then we saw about 93 from the fastball. So Boxberger after the save. And the pitch will be taken up high. The Orioles get the top of the order. Deaza, Pierce, and Snyder. One for three. Deaza's picked up a base hit. The Orioles two hits, Lavarnway and Deaza. Longoria moving in at third. It all starts with getting a base runner on, and you'll take. Yeah. Boxberger has been really tough against the Orioles. He's got a 2 0 career record with a 2 0 8. ERA. This is the 13th game he's pitched against the Orioles. He's given up three earned runs, four hits in 13 innings, 20 strikeouts, and two walks. And he may issue one right here. And now goes yeah. three and zero. Oh. And closing is usually easier than actually uh, being a setup guy. If you remember last year, came in with the bases loaded, nine pitches, struck out the side. So when you cl close, usually it's a clean inning. In other words, nobody on. Taking all the way to Oz yeah. trying to draw that walk three and one and it's been a tight strike zone. Right there that ball almost high enough to be called ball four. So you're just looking for base runners just take them any way you can get them. Do nothing raised ninth inning. Boxberger's right there with the heater and what is that uh, that extra run in the eighth the bottom of the eighth make a difference. Huge run. Yeah, really RBI does. base hit Jennings after Longoria picked up the double and scored. Longoria scored both runs. Walked the first time, doubled the second time. And Diazza will be jammed. It will be foul back. Three ball, two strike count. This first man on, then you got the power, Pierce, hitting in the number two spot. Orioles, half their run scored on homers here in this series. 3 2 delivery, that's down the line. Will it stay fair? No. As it will make his way back. For another 3 2. He's had three hits in the series, three for 12, including a home run. Orioles trying to mount the comeback. Won the first two without ever trailing in either game. 13,569 the attendance for this third of the season. 13, 5, 6, 9. Jepson worked an inning, a walk, a couple of strikeouts. Boxberger. 3 2 down to third. There's nobody there. That's a base hit, and the Orioles get one right off the end of the bat. Well, that was a changeup, Gary, at 80, and nice, nice hitting with two strikes. You know, it's a swing and miss pitch. That's how he got the 104 strikeouts, and you just kind of cue it. You can see Long Area. That's your third baseman playing that shortstop, and you know, again, that extra run. What a huge difference. So, Pierce. He's done the damage with the home runs here in the series. We've talked about it. Two home runs. 0 for 3 in this ball game. He's DHing. Hitting in the number two spot. Boxberger delivers to him inside. And the Orioles making a game of it here in the ninth. The home run lifetime off Boxberger. Well, you have four guys in a row, and make it almost five that do have home run power. Now you don't have to tie the game by hitting a home run. You just have to keep the ball from being on the ground. Wild the ball rip. And a one ball one strike count on Steve Pierce. Yeah, he did not get any pitches to hit off of Odorizzi tonight. 
high ball hitter. They know it. And you want to go hard in, but then again, if you go too hard in, he'll take it off, you know, get hit by a pitch and then soft away. One ball, one strike count. Outside, block made by Rivera. Kind of obviously important to keep that double play in order from the Rays perspective. Two ball, one strike count on Pierce. Pierce joined Rafael Palmero, Melvin Mora, Nick Marcakis, Chris Davis, and Nelson Cruz, Orioles, who have homered in the first two games of a season. Pierce would like to make it three in a row at the beginning of the year. Two ball, one strike delivery to him, and on top of that one, and fouled it off again, two and two. Battle down to the wire has happened in the ball game last night when the Rays came back from a six nothing deficit to make it a six five ball game. For the Orioles it was their closer Zach Britton who came on to clean it up. Now Boxberg is trying to do that for the Rays. Two ball two strike delivery to Pierce and got him. Yeah from 80 to 93. Dom Chidi, the bullpen uh, pitching coach for the Orioles, said it's nice to have 10, 12 miles per hour, and then he just throws the zoom ball. Aggressive, you're hot, you're seeing the ball well, and he just throws it by him because he gets it in. See, it's not out over the plate, it's right on the inside portion of the plate with great movement. So Snyder with one down comes to the plate. Snyder will get his first look at Boxberger. Alejandro Diaz at first base being held, so a little more room. If Snyder pulls the ball in the infield, 80 on that one for a strike. And Travis looked back at Paul and Howard and said, "Might have been a little bit off the corner." Diaz with his lead, the 0-1 delivery. One ball, one strike count. Yeah, power zone, outside middle. Maybe actually a little bit higher than uh, most left handers. This guy's because we haven't I, I haven't seen enough of Travis whether he's a typical low ball hitter. Off the end and back. They've held him down tonight. Four hits in the series, four for eight, three RBIs. One ball, two strike count. Rays on top, two to nothing here in the top of the ninth inning. Two five and zero oh for the Rays. Oh three and zero oh for the Orioles. Orioles have left only three on base, and only one of those in scoring position tonight. One and two from Boxberger, and it was in the middle. Yeah, well, it was, and that's what 80. That's what the changeup does. It slows the bat down. I mean, this is a perfect example. He got a pretty good hitter. He's been seeing the ball well. He's looking to just outside. Is it going to be a changeup? Can I see it? And the ball is in the glove, be it right by him. And again, 94 inside middle. Rivera reaches across the plate, back to back strikeouts. And this is what he does. So here's Adam Jones with two down here in the ninth, representing the potential tying run in the ball game. He is 0 for 2 off Boxberger. Shift on in the infield. Deaza at first. And it will be outside for a ball. Boxberger. After the save, Odorizzi, pitcher of record on the winning side, Miguel Gonzalez on the losing side. 1 0 delivery. There it is again. Yeah. Well, bottom drops out. Great life. I, I kind of compared him to Fernando Rodney. He was now with Seattle, but he pitched here, set the all time uh, lowest earn run average, better than Dennis Eckersley. Now he threw a little bit harder, but what they had in common is their change ups were almost unhittable. Life, depth, great arm speed. 1 1 delivery to Adam Jones. Chase one up high and really didn't get a swing at it. Waved 1 and 2. And it's a real easy deliberate windup. And he gets it to 93 or 94 with, with great ease.
One ball, two strike pitch, and that's the ball game. So he strikes the side out after a single by Deaza. And the Orioles will not sweep as the Orioles get shut out by these Rays. Last year they were shut out 11 times on the year. 2 5 and 0 for the Rays, 0 3 and 0 for the Orioles. Orioles do take this series, however, having won the first two, but in this one, 2 0 the final.